This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. Oh, we'll see, you folks. After after last week, Kent set the bar very high. I'm stuck with this. This is so tough. Why would he choose this one? It's so hard. This is the end. We're going to talk Bond again. Gadgets, girls, and villains. Watch Bond break hearts and heads. We'll talk Skyfall, Casino Royale. Quantum of Solace It's not that bad I promise Oh, The Living Daylights There's way more movies License to Kill I'm not gonna get Golden Knight Tomorrow Never Dies The World Is Not Enough And Die Another Day Spectre No Time to Die And Skyfall (laughs) I wanted to do that one twice (laughs) Yes. <laughs> wow. You, and you had to fit all of them in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like a Wikipedia article sung to you yeah, was, by Adele. That was, was beautiful. I just glossed over all the Brosnans, as should you. Yeah. Um, no. You did. Yeah. Well, How dare you? Oh. Uh, no, this. Uh, thank you, Zach. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, both of you. Yeah. Fantastic jobs on the You had intros. a chance to sing on the bacon bit. I kind of did. Yeah, you did. But I didn't. Uh, but welcome to Bacon Cell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And I'm Zach. We'd like to thank you for listening to our last show, the first part of our James Bond. You got to do Dr. the Sean Connery November. voice. Finally, I got to do this. Yeah, because I noticed on the last two Bond shows, you you did the same intro twice. <laughs> did I? Yeah, you did. Uh, what was Bacon the intro? Shale. Ah, yes. Ah, yes James probably Bacon Shale or whatever. Back when it was far more simple. Yes. yes. It, was, it, was, it was actually awesome. Well, we had some really good feedback. You have and, backing and, tracks then. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Valerie Loveless Ilgu said, I'm not a huge fan of James Bond, so I'm sorry. Uh, probably because the first Bond movie I ever saw was Live and Let Die. Ooh. But I am so happy you guys were finally able to do this episode. This was a fun episode, and I look forward to the next one. Aw, thank well, you. Here you go. Here's just for you. Also, Stephen Ross says, great episode. So Roger Moore was my first Bond. Uh, that's a good confession. Um, <laughs> in fact, I saw most of his before the others. Where was the discussion about gadgets? Yeah. Uh, and my new Bond fan friend, Zachary Western, that's me, was the only one to bring up the car. And I will bring them up. Yeah, Zach, Zach, yeah we Zach, don't really know much about that. Yeah, he talks about it. Although I do feel like we, we, we talk about the movie so much, we haven't given a lot of love to the gadgets. Well, yeah, we well, should. You can, they are becoming unavoidable yes. as we move forward into yes. these more modern ones. Uh, then two more here I just wanted to call out. First, there was the discussion that was brought up by True Kimball, which was, what is the Bacon Sale approved watch order? Chronic, uh, chronological oh, like a mach- machete order? Yeah, I think I think you just go in order. Yeah, chronological. The only the only change I would offer is you can probably swap on Her Majesty's Secret Service and Diamonds Are Forever, so you don't go. So you get Connery. All, so you don't go Connery, 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 Lazenby, Lazenby, I, Connery. I think you can do two movies of each actor, and you'd be fine. So if, I would say first and last. If you just if you want uh, the sampler platter, okay. you do their first and their last. Mm. So you get the the good one and the weird one. Disagree. Approved. Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, well, maybe we can talk about that later. But yeah. and then finally, this is important to me. Mandy Sue Sparkle on Instagram says, mm-hmm. "We all know the real star, and really of all the Connery movies, is the powder blue Terry Koth <laughs> man romper. Yes, uh, heavily featured in Goldfinger. Yes, I yeah. believe. Hashtag bring back the romper. That is so good. There's a lot of powder blue Terry Cloth in this franchise early on, uh, but particularly there. Then she goes on to threaten to make us <laughs> make bacon sale powder blue romper. Terry. I would say rompers. threaten. That sounds like a gift. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. I'd wear it every day. Yeah, yeah, and we would look great. Yes, I'd wear it every day. Yeah, <laughs> because last time we were talking about uh, the Connery era, the Lazenby era, and the Moore, Roger Moore era, and uh, we ended on on a view to a kill back in 1985. But that's not what we're talking about today. What are we talking about today, Zach? We're talking Bond, modern Bond. So mm. movies that people have actually seen. Almost, almost, <laughs> almost. We're almost the movies <laughs> not people at have the actually beginning. Seen. In fact, nobody's seen the, these ones we're going to talk about first. Well, I think they would. But first of all, let's talk about Sir Roger Moore. So Sir Roger Moore was, oh, I think he was 59. Very, when, very his last old. movie, when, right? When, when, well, when this movie was starting to be in production, they were looking at this going, okay, 
And Who by that, you mean The Living Daylights? Yes, The Living Daylights is the first movie we're going to be talking yes. about today. Based on uh, Ian Fleming's short story, The Living Daylights, uh, which, you know, the, the plot of the book forms the first act of this film. Right. It kind of goes off the rails. But Timothy Dalton is the one who plays James Bond in The Living Daylights. Right. For two movies. But he was not the first choice. No. There was another actor. Roger Moore had bowed out and said, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm old. I'm not going to play these anymore. Because he wanted to be out at like movie four. Yeah, I think. But he, they kept bringing him in, like especially when Connery is going to play Bond again, as in we talked about in the last show. Yeah, so in 87, oh, but just before 87, they were looking at, uh, you remember the Countess from, uh, she gets hit by the dune buggy. Is yep. that, which one is that? It's for your eyes only. For your eyes only. So there was an actress there. Yeah, I was never going to know that. The actress who <laughs> and played. I call her? myself a super fan. <laughs> the actress who played the Countess was uh, either dating or married to. I don't remember which. Uh, a man named Pierce Brosnan. What? I've heard of him. And they said, well, he looks like he could be James Bond because everyone in this franchise talks this way. <laughs> the producers are Sean Connery. Yes, all of them are. And they saw him and they said, "Ooh, let's make him James Bond. So they decided to make him an offer. He couldn't refuse. Uh, and wrong franchise. Oh. But at the time, uh, Pierce Brosnan was contracted to a television series called Remington Steel, which you mm-hmm. haven't seen. It's actually a pretty entertaining show. Yeah. And he plays kind of a James Bond-esque character. A uh, very TV type. Yes. Kirkland he, James Bond. He's kind of a fool, Remington Steel is, and uh, the character that Pierce Brosnan played. Mm-hmm. But he looks cool. And so that's why people... Well, Pierce came. Brosnan. Yeah. So, but he was on that show... And it, this contract was about to end. Yeah, the they show said, was canceled, what, two seasons? They, they were going to get rid of the show. Yeah. And then they said, oh, do you want to be James Bond? And so the rumors started going around. Rumor mill here in the 80s, mid-80s, they're like, hey, this guy in Remington Steel is going to be the next James Bond. All of a sudden, there's a surge of interest in Remington Steel. And NBC chose to renew Pierce Brosnan's contact like a, three days before his contract was about to yeah. expire. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden, uh, Broccoli, Albert, uh, Albert Broccoli. Yeah, 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 Cubby. Cubby. yeah, yeah. Cubby. yeah. I have an anonymous source tells me it's actually pronounced Broccoli. Oh, but we're gonna say broccoli. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he withdrew the offer to Brosnan then after that because he said, "I don't want uh, my my James Bond character associated with a contemporary television series." So they they took back it's the just offer. Crazy. I believe he said, uh, uh, "Remington Steel will never be James Bond, and James Bond will never be Remington Steel." So then after they pulled, never the offer, say never again. After they pulled the offer, there was a drop in interest in Remington Steel, and it was canceled. After only five oh, new yeah. episodes were filmed. That's crazy. NBC screwed over Pierce Brosnan. They yeah. did. Yeah. So to pull it back, they need another James Bond. Well, let's go back even further in time to Honor Majesty's Secret Service. What? That was like in the 60s. Especially, and I'm glad you're doing that voice because that's when Connery dropped out, as we remember. And they needed a new James Bond to cover for him. And so they said, hey, there's this guy. I think he's from Wales. Welsh Timothy actor. Dalton. Yeah. And they young, said, hey, young actor, very young, especially at that time. Yeah. Let's get him to play James Bond and cover for Connery. He's like, hey, look, I could do this, but I'm way too young for you guys. He, I think it was he in his like mid 20s at yeah. that point. At that point, like, yeah, 23 probably. or something like that. And he said, you know, what? I'm out. I don't want to do this. I'm too young for the role. I'll probably get typecast. And so he bowed out and so they got Lassenby. Connery came back and then they said, OK, do you want to be in it now for Live and Let Die? And he said, no, I'm still too young. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine Live and Let Die with a young Timothy Dalton. So much better. Oh, my gosh. Because Timothy Dalton is one of these people. Well, because Roger Moore was 45 when he started. Yeah. He's older than Connery. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy because he still looked kind of younger at that point, I feel. Yeah. But he aged very quickly. It's the Scottish. Yeah. But Timothy Dalton just kept saying no. And so even though Pierce Brosnan was the choice after Roger Moore, mm-hmm. they kind of went back to, and they said, hey, Timothy Dalton, we've went been begging there. you for 15 years. Yeah. Will you be in our movie? And he said, you know what? I'm willing to be in the movies. I'll read the books. I want to be exactly what Ian Fleming had written for the role. A boring bird watcher. Basically. (laughs) But I don't want to be like Roger Moore. Yeah. The the campy version. And so they cast, and here we are to this first movie we're going to talk about, The Living Daylights with Timothy Dalton as James Bond. 40. He started now as 40 as James Bond. So Living Daylights, jumping into it. James Bond is sent to, I keep doing Sean Connery. James Bond is sent to investigate a KGB policy to kill all enemy spies and uncover an arms deal that potentially has a major major global ramifications. Mm-hmm. That seems very generic for a James Bond right. movie. Uh, but yes, this one stars Timothy Dalton. Dalton. It also has uh, Miriam D'Abo, who was uh, a Wonder Years. Yep. It's Kevin's older sister. Right. Uh, she's the Bond girl, and this one is Kara Milvey. And then you got Joe Don Baker as Brad Whitaker. The bad guy. John Reese davies in this one as well? Yeah, yeah. Gerald Pushkin? Yeah. John, John Glenn is the director. This is his fourth Bond film. 
He directed three other more films. So. This one feels like the cult favorite one. This you is like so? the hipster choice. You want to know why? Because it's awesome. It's a, So you're one of these people. I... Well, love it. We should also love say, it. We should also say this was a reboot, meaning like they got a new yeah. money penny, they got a new M. You can tell a- from the intro where it's like this uh, military scene, military practice. Yeah, that becomes a real battle essentially. Yeah. Well, it was. It feels new. It was proposed to do basically a casino royale, but or, or where it was his first mission. Well, and this Cubby Broccoli is like no. I don't this want was that. meant to be a prequel to Doctor No. Yeah. And so kind of crazy. it's going to Miss restart things. But yeah, we get a new timeline here, which really is shown by Money Penny. Because so for the first time, we don't have Lois Maxwell. Yeah. And, you know, that's more, why you like it. You hate Lois Maxwell. I love Money Penny. But you like the reboot. I love Money Penny. <laughs> don't, don't you say anything otherwise. Don't question his love. No, she's amazing. But yeah, we, we get a new timeline here. Yeah. And so any time where you would like visit a grave or see a date or anything, now it all has to change. Yes. And this is the 25th anniversary of Bond at this point. That was kind of what they were pushing. All right. 25 years. Brand new stuff. Rock and roll headphones we're going to strangle people with. Whistling key ring bombs. The uh, ghetto blaster. Literally ghetto blaster. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Because Q is back. Yes. The only person to come back was good old Q. Still still chugging along. Love him. Uh, Uh, Also, the cello and its case were featured prominently in this movie. The only thing I remembered about this movie was sledding down a hill on a cello case. Oh, that one. And then using the cello as like an oar to yeah. get around. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also General Gogols. Mm-hmm. He's the Russian general. He's been in a ton of James Bonds before this one. This was his final appearance as well. I really like the uh, climactic battle of this one because it's very Uncharted-like. It's the uh, cargo plane. Yeah. And, and then also the Afghan war field and everything. So one of the coolest yeah. things about this movie in particular, uh, in, in all the movies up to this point, is that they do practical stunts. Yes. So no, that is not Timothy Dalton on the back of an airplane hanging off a cargo net getting flung around. No, it's but a it's a stunt man. But it's mm-hmm. real. And someone's getting flung around. I felt so bad for that. Part. The coolest part of that is when, uh, when there's a villain hanging onto Bond's boots yes, yes, yes. at this part. And then Bond unlaces the boot. He cuts it open with his knife. Yeah. yeah. And then the, so the villain flies off the back of the plane yeah. and... Uh, the, the villain who kills people with rock and roll headphones. Yes, precisely. Ne- Necros. This is yeah. Necros. Yeah. Timothy Dalton then says, he got the boot. Yeah, what what happened to him? He got the boot. <laughs> hey, that's a good Dalton. That's a good Dalton. Yeah. And then, guess, then he runs in and gets the plan. How do you guys feel about Dalton? I love him. I, I As think a person or I, as a Bond? He, I think as a he's Bond. Not he's not the most handsome. He's not the most handsome. He's He literally has Daniel Craig energy. <laughs> Like DCE, okay. Yeah, like Timothy Dalton walked so Daniel Craig could run. Like they, <laughs> if you look at it, they are playing the I same. Love that so much. They are playing the same style they of are. character. Yeah, um, I think that he he has this energy to him that is not like I'm the coolest guy in the room. He's like I'm going to figure this out. He's I'm the reluctant do, hero bond. Yeah, I'm going to do this mission. I'm I'm good at what I do. This is my job. I feel like the thing that works against Dalton is there is still the more stink on the series that <laughs> there was still the camp involved. Living Daylights yeah. is trying to get away from it, but there's still a lot of very 80s stuff in here. There is one thing in particular that I do think doesn't quite fit now, but I will call out the Aston Martin V8 Vantage Volante. Please do. That uh, Aston Martin that starts out as a convertible and then they put they, they put the hard top back on it. Yeah. It has a new coat of paint. That car, first of all, is amazing. I would love one. Uh, and it's also featured in No Time to Die. But it, we're going along, we're driving along on the ice, and then out of nowhere, it now has skis. Yeah. And, oh, yep. and, mm-hmm. and missiles and stuff like that. That was the only part where I was like, ooh, that feels... But it's James that, Bond. That feels a little Roger Mori to me. This is also the final Bond film to be scored by composer John Barry. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he hated AHA yeah. so much. So, Zach, I'm guessing this is a tier one from you. Tier 001. Yes, because we're doing tier 001, we should mention again. Yeah. Tier 001 being the highest, tier 002, and tier 003 being the lowest. This is one that I seriously considered bumping up, but it did get a high tier 2. I know it it's doesn't a exist. It's a thing. So it is a 002 for me. All right. I do think this is an uh, extremely underrated movie, and if you if you like Daniel Craig, James Bond, you should really check out The Living Daylight. He's a little more grounded, a little more realistic. But maybe not licensed to kill. Let's, we'll get into that. I gave this a tier two, and I think it's justified because it runs a little long. It's 131 minutes, over two hours, and it, I don't think it has enough story to justify the runtime. That's why um, they have so many villains, I think. Maybe. Uh, so 002 from Zach, 002, 002 from me. Hi, 002. 002. Okay, we it's agree It's a very on this good one. movie. It, it is good. Check it out. It's enjoyable.
Now we have 1989's License to Kill. So two years later, after capturing a drug lord, Phoenix Leiter is left for dead and his wife is murdered. James Bond goes rogue and seeks vengeance on those responsible as he infiltrates an organization posing as a hitman. This is directed by John Glenn for his fifth and final time and Timothy Dalton's for his second and final time. Uh, So the villain, we have Brian Sanchez uh, and we also have one of the henchmen. It's uh, Benicio del Toro yeah. as Dario. Baby Benicio. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not super baby, though. He's because 21 he's, years old. He's, he's the menacing. youngest Bond villain. He's scary villain. looking. Oh, he's scary, but he's the youngest I'd, Bond villain. I'd put him in the henchman category as well. Yeah. 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 But uh, Robert Davi here as uh, Sanchez is very quintessential 80s, 80s. drug lord character. So, yeah. Well, if you don't know who he is, uh, Goonies. Right. He's one of the Fratelli brothers. Yeah. He's the older Fratelli brother. But it, it works, though, because like we've seen the, we're going to steal nukes to threaten these other countries and get them to fight. This was like a, a revenge story. Yeah. It absolutely is. So Felix Leiter, which we get a return of... David Hedison. Yes, we get a return of David Hedison, who was in Live and Let Die. Yeah, like in 1973, he was Felix Leiter. Yeah. And then they had a Felix Leiter in the previous movie, Living Daylights, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he's oh the Living but Daylights then, Felix is terrible. But then they, they don't use him again. They pull back from the 70s guy. Well, and this, what's interesting is, in this story, Felix, who in the very 80s move, is no longer with the CIA. He's with the, the drug enforcement. DEA. Yeah, DEA. Yes. And he gets attacked. And he actually gets mauled by a shark and gets his leg bitten off. He disagreed with something that ate him. Yes. <laughs> right? That's what it says in the mm-hmm. text. Yeah. Now, that happens in the novel of A Live and Let Die, oh. the movie that this Felix was also in. Whoa. Weird, right? That is weird. Yeah. Well, and I will say, out of all, out of the broad, not the Brosman, excuse me, the Dalton movies do get kind of muddled in my head. Mm-hmm. But this storyline stuck out to me because I was like, this is a revenge tale. This you want to know why? It's freaking awesome. It's fun. I, think- I enjoy it. I totally enjoy it. Oh, this like is it. a Jack Bauer story for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. where Thanks, like yeah. this is like yeah. uh, it's one of those I've gone rogue uh, and, and I need uh, to take down the villain. Well, and, and it, license to kill gets revoked, which is yeah. kind of that. Oh, you can't. He see seems more. more dangerous than more ever could have been. It's this, got Wayne Newton in it. That's the weird part. <laughs> There's a yeah. religious cult with Wayne Newton as the leader. This movie was actually originally titled License Revoked. Ah. Yeah, License, License to, kill to Kill sounds cool. Yeah, it does. Like uh, if it's a Saturday morning, you're like, I want to watch License to Kill. That sounds fun. But there are some weird moments of this, like when he uh, drives an 18 wheeler on two wheel on, on one side. Uh, I think that's a great scene. And then he pops a wheelie with the same truck. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's weird. So corny. But it's a cool last can fight. I, can I slap the personal connection buzzer? Yep. Please do. My grandfather uh, kept those trucks running. What he was uh, the diesel a diesel mechanic that helped keep those trucks running. Oh, in the filming in the during the filming, really. My mom wow. worked for the trucking company, <gasps> so she actually got like phone calls from an, an at the time associate producer Barbara Broccoli Broccoli, and we're not the come, Italian mafia. Come yeah. fix say the broccoli, trucks, please. Yes. So she coordinated with them. Your to mom get did, the, to, yeah. And so and my so on. The I need DVD, a selfie with your mom on the DVD features of uh, License to Kill. There is a brief interview with my grandpa. Yeah. But th- and you hate That's this movie? Awesome. Yeah, I do. You hate it though. Yeah. And there's a picture. It's we have- so heartbreaking at the beginning, though. Yeah, like they're going to the wedding. And, yeah, and, and Pam Bouvier. No, it's it has mm. on Her Majesty's Secret Service ending vibes at the beginning. Yes. Um, I just think that it goes a little too aggressively 80s, and I'm actually not a big fan of 80s drug riddled action movies. Yeah, this one is actually pretty violent. There's this a is the most violent. In fact, an, the initial cut of this movie was rated R. And, and, that totally and, makes sense. And, and as far as I'm aware, there have been Blu-ray releases since that are the rated R version. Well, this is the first James Bond film to score a PG-13 rating due to its violent content. That's surprising because a lot of these seem very PG-13, especially because they have a lot of hidden sesamity in them. Mm, not so hidden, in the, apparently. In, in, in Dalton ones, they get a little Living more... Living Daylights yeah. actually has some not-so-hidden stuff. Yeah. As far as gadgets, we have the cigarette packet detonator yes, and the plastic explosives, and they're, they're disguised as dent and toothpaste, yes. and a repelling cummerbund, which is kind of fun, and yeah. an exploding alarm clock. We also have the uh, the signature camera gun with the, like, yeah. the, the handprint reader, which we actually see in a later Daniel Craig movie as well. Now, the, the theme song for this one, uh, License to Kill by Gladys, uh, by Gladys Knight. Knight, should have been great. Kind of forgettable. Kind of, very forgettable. Mm-hmm. But then the end credits popped up, and it's like, if you... Ask Me To by Patti LaBelle. And I went, this is from a James Bond movie? Yeah. Then covered no by idea. Celine Dion. Yeah. yeah. This License to Kill, though, I believe there was a lawsuit involved because the horns at the beginning are from Goldfinger. Mm. And I'm pretty sure they got sued for it. 
It's a now, weird song. This one, I like I said, this is one of the more memorable ones for me. It has its ups. It has its downs. I give this a tier 002. This is, a, I, I think, apparently both of the Daltons are kind of middling for me. This is a tier 002, and it's a high 002 for me because... For some reason, I have good memories of it in like the late '80s, early '90s, well, watching it on TV. Because this one, this this movie actually did suffer from competition. Yeah, because this was 1989. You There's get movies a lot like of big movies. Batman, Lethal Weapon Two, The Abyss, Ghostbusters Two, Last Star Crusade. Trek, The Five, The Final Frontier, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, they have starring aged Sean Connery, much better. And I feel like, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, like these are all, it didn't crack the top 10. Yeah, huge this movies. This James Bond movie did not crack the top 10, which was uh, kind of a blow to the to the whole thing. But yeah. Zach, you didn't give your tier yet. Um, I'm giving this a 003. Boo. Don't, I, uh, when I'm watching, I Don't will never pick this one up. However, uh, one thing I do love about it is our henchman, Dario Benicio Del Toro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baby love, Benicio. Love the way he delivers the line, Felix Sliders, that goes, where's my wife? And he says, we sent her on a nice Honeymoon. <laughs> and that is one of my favorite things in the entire franchise. Yeah, uh, check that out. It's on YouTube. But so I, I just I will never pick this up to watch it on purpose. So Joel, and, you were saying like this movie came out in nineteen eighty nine. Yes. When was the next James Bond movie? Not until nineteen ninety five. But before we get there, Ken. Yeah. Because when this movie happened, it didn't do well. It did okay, so it still made five times its budget. But it was considered a box office failure compared to other James right. Bond movies. Director John Glenn left Eon Productions. Uh, the, the screenwriter, Richard Malbaum, died shortly after this movie was made. And there was legal issues uh, that were happening between the James Bond character and uh, Broccoli and Saltzman and, and everyone else who owned everything about this. So Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, the production company that bought the rights to the franchise started playing it on TV and didn't pay enough for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like really stupid. Because of all those issues, there was a gap. Yeah. The largest gap in Bond history of six years, which was almost beat by Daniel Craig between ridiculous. Spectre and No Time to Die, pandemic which is ridiculous. It. Well, it's crazy because so Timothy Dalton was meant to star in Property of a Lady, which is one of those Ian Fleming titles that we talked yeah. about that have never been oh, used. We didn't mention License to Kill is the first title of a James Bond movie that has no connection to Ian Fleming yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. I and mean, so technically, yeah, he was ready like the next year to start shooting. And obviously there were all these like legal issues and everything mm-hmm. like that. And then MGM just kind of kept the movie from happening. Mm-hmm. Like everything was up in the air. It wasn't until 1994 where Dalton finally just said, hey, I'm done with the role. His, his contract was coming up and he just went, you know, so I, I've done I've, I've, I've He's done in it. a movie in 1989, five years later, still no movie. I'm retired. Yeah. And uh, uh, Broccoli still wanted Dalton. But his his contract expired. He said no thanks, and they were negotiating with Mel Gibson at one point. Yeah, uh, weird. With Hugh Grant with no Liam, with Liam Neeson. Like these are the people they were considering. Liam Neeson. Brian Mills. It would have been good. Uh, he's like mm. a Roger Moore body type. But then they went. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so am I. No, <laughs> hey, hey. Remember Remington Steel. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. Chose, well, I was I was with the kids the other day, and we saw this real fun movie, wait, Mrs. Ron Doubtfire. <laughs> wait, so the producers went from Sean Connery to Michael J. Fox and Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, basically. Hey, okay. uh, you, you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> but get then, no respect. But then we get Zach. 1995's Golden Eye. Oh, now, sorry, sorry. Golden Eye. Golden Eye. Golden Eye. This is Which probably, is I'm going to make a bet here and say, Kent, this was your and I's theatrical introduction to James Bond. Absolutely. And this is Pierce Brosnan, as uh, Pierce brosnan I'll, I'll read the synopsis here. Years after, a friend and fellow double O agent is killed on a joint mission. A secret space station weapons program known as GoldenEye is stolen. James Bond sets out to stop a Russian crime syndicate from using the weapon. Was Pierce Brosnan, like, created in a lab to play James Bond, though? It feels like it. Yeah. The guy looks like James Bond. He's so sassy. Maybe it's just because that's what, you know, you saw first, but whatever. Sure. He looks good. So in this one, you have... He looks good? Yep. Okay. In this one, you have... I'm not going to say her name right. Isabella Skor... Oh, Skorupko. Skorupko as Natalia Simonova. You mean the one who was up on my... The posters on my wall? Natalia. Yeah. And then you get uh, Bond villain... uh, Spoiler alert, maybe? I don't know, but uh, Sean Bean is Alex 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 Trevelyan. And uh, Famke Jensen as Xenia on a top. Xenia on a top. And the theme song, GoldenEye, it, it was written by Bono and The Edge and performed by Tina Turner. This should have been a fantastic now, song. before you watch the older ones, this still felt like a Shirley Bassey type song. Yes. Until you heard better songs. Like GoldenEye. Like, yeah, but like, you'll Darryl. never know how I watched you from the shadows as a child. I was watching it as a child. 
Mm. So maybe it works. This but, feels more like a U2 song than a Tina Turner song. But you guys okay. know they weren't the first ones approached. Originally, Ace of Bass was oh, approached yeah. to do the song oh, for that's this. that's bad. And they what? wrote a song called Golden Eye. Do you and have a clip? I have a clip. Yes. Of, oh, oh, it's the juvenile. I ha- yes, because they actually ended up changing. After they didn't get picked, they changed the lyrics to the juvenile. This is Ace of Bass singing the juvenile. And in your mind, I just want you to replace the, the juvenile eye. with the golden eye. Are you ready? You can hear the James Bond there. That is Cheryl Crow. This isn't Cheryl Crow. I'm just saying. Tina Turner. The following. Ah. She leaves a lonely night. <laughs> Their accent is so apparent. In yes. that one, yes. Yeah. But that is a very Bondy song. Yeah, it was, and I enjoyed it. And truth be told, one of the biggest downfalls of GoldenEye is that terrible soundtrack this yeah. this score is one of the most painful scores i have ever noticed in a movie it's the score from that little uh short where they're saying you wouldn't steal a car <laughs> yeah. well it's it's the guy who did leon the professional luke Besson. yes the, the composer eric sarah probably not yeah. how you say his name it's been tied with him that would make more sense for a movie that he would do this score makes no sense. Well, does it because big, it's mid nineties? We need though. big brass. Well, and I have though. a note here, which once again I have sixty four pages of notes that yes, patrons you do. can see at patreon.com. dot slash bacon. So I like Nintendo sixty four. Ah, uh, but I just took a bunch of notes during this, uh, and one of the things I say here is like the soundtrack during the mountain drive scene is awful. It's like someone broke out their keyboard in their mom's basement to show off their funky tunes. It's, it's so bad. And even even the gun barrel sequence is like this metallic. Dee, 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 dee. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fine for the GoldenEye video game. Awesome on N64. Oh, this, this but, the score is But horrible. guys, guys, we talk about cool intros for Bonds, right? With Sean Connery at the poker table, right? When you have Pierce Brosnan repelling at that Pierce scene. Pierce Brosnan's stunt off, double. Off the stunt dam. double. <laughs> But then, you know, attacking the guy in the bathroom as oh, well. Like, yeah. it all works perfectly. Kent loves people getting attacked in bathrooms. <laughs> bathroom ninja. He loves it in Mission Impossibles, too. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Kent. From the beginning, when he jumps off, oh, yeah. uh, it's the oh, Contra Dam. Okay. In, uh, oh, Switzerland? Where is that? I can't remember where it's from. But it's actually an actual place. People go there and actually... It's Switzerland, and they do... They bungee jump off it. Really? But that part, to him... Uh, having to shoot the barrels and jump through the thing and then and drive a motorcycle off a cliff and then fall into a moving airplane and pull out of a dive. Yeah. I love this opening. Yes. I love it so much. This is, I think, where the nostalgia really starts to kick in. Um, for us or for you? For you guys. Mm. I don't adore this movie. Uh, and, How could you not? And after rewatching it, I'll tell you what. Brosnan, he doesn't feel very sure in this movie. It feels a little what? bit like he's trying to figure out what his brand of Bond is. And I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. I don't think he ever figured it out. One of my favorite he, moments. He is neither Connery nor Moore, and he Good. can't figure out which one he wants to be. No, one, he's too he's Those two are the only the two fence. options out there. He could be whatever he wants. But what, like this is the one where he's sitting there, and I, I believe, I think it's this one, he's like trying to, I think he's getting his watch behind a pillar, and all of a sudden a bullet like hits the pillar right by his head, and he looks like annoyed at it. Like, what the heck? And it was one of those moments where I went, he's so cool. He's not even like yeah. bothered by all this happening around him. He he is close to more for being the the wimpiest Bond to me. How dare you! I wow, don't, I don't believe Suave him. Suave Bond a, himself. He's he's sharper image Bond. No, he's like a Bond of a guy that you would want to punch in the face. No. Shame on you! I, I disgust. He is and, not, tough and you may at not all. like him, uh, but like he is stacked with the the most balanced cast of a Bond to that no, point. I think. Wait, can't can Bacon still prove that Zach's take on Pierce Brosnan's is the aha theme Boo song of Finger. Nostal- we should make that noise every time we do it now. <laughs> the nostalgia goggles are thick. Oh, hardly. <laughs> this movie, other than the score, is so crisp. Well, the hacking is also a little well, 90s. Well, it's 90s hacking. It's oh, like we have even visual hacking. When two, it's like- 2010s hacking is the same sort of we hacking. We haven't even talked about Alan Cumming as Boris. I'm invincible. One, uh, one of the best side characters. Yeah. 
I Amazing. totally agree. And Zinni on the top, she's a top three henchman. Ooh. Absolutely. But she no actually, question. she's the reason I can't show this movie to my kids. Oh, absolutely. Because this is the most explicit sussy scene yeah. ever in a Bond movie. And it, I mean, tamed by many standards, but in a Bond movie, you're like, what? Normally you see them kiss and then you see them I kind of thought, I thought the one in Die Another Day was worse. But Well, no, we'll get, that's, that's the first one. Uh, Judy Dench here. I mean, oh, what's not to a new, new like? Judy Dench. Yes. And, and interesting, once you are familiar with Judy Dench in the Craig movies, she's very different here. Yeah. She's a, a bean counter yeah. here. And and no and Bond doesn't like her. And the single best Bond girl of all time. Yeah. Natalia. Oh, yeah. Natalia she, is the best Bond girl of I, all time. I love she's a great Bond girl. I love when a Bond girl doesn't isn't just there for eye candy, right? She adds something and yeah, and, Natalia is great for that. And I will say, like, as the movie to have a double O agent as the villain. Yeah. Spoiler alert. It's amazing. And Sean it's Bean, a twist. as a good actor, as a villain, surprising Although, for a Bond I movie. I will never understand how getting shot in the face, sure. in, in the head, makes you one half of your face it was slightly the scarred. It was the explosion. But yeah. then where was the bullet hole? No, uh, He got sp- shot. It was a, they were in on it. It wasn't a real gun. They were, they were in cahoots. That's a twist. Yeah, they were I don't in, recall they were in okay, 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 the beginning, okay. and it wasn't a real gun. We so, talked okay, a lot about we'll it. We'll save our Goldeneye show. The, the expo- hold on. The explosion is because Bond set, was supposed to set the timers for six minutes, and he set them for three minutes, yeah. and that's why Alex, is, Alex well, was, was captured. Him. No, he got shot in the face, and then someone put on the big head mode on the N64, oh, yes, 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 yes. and that's why you've got all these scars. <sighs> okay. okay. But uh, no, the gold, Goldeneye is the reason to buy an N64. Oh, yes, definitely. Absolutely. And Which this came out game. two years later. Yeah. Really? A full two years? In 97. And it taught everyone of my generation. This is why the nostalgia is th- so thick. It taught everyone about Odd Job, about Jaws, about May Day. Yeah. And I was like, who are these why people? Why are they in there? But awesome. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's this compilation of yeah. Bond history that I'm like, maybe one day in 20 years, I'll watch these movies and kind of like them. Well, and also, I mean, we, we talked about the reboot with uh, Timothy Dalton. They reboot it again. You get a new Money Penny here, uh, played yeah. by Samantha Bond. Yeah, and which this is, is a cool name. This is her only good haircut. In the uh, franchise. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, and then you get Q Desmond Llewellyn, who's been there since the '60s, is still Q, and I love that about this movie. Which, by the way, they have a wheelchair missile launcher, a grappling belt, which we saw earlier in the movie, a, and the ballpoint pen grenade. The, yes, the exploding pen grenade is amazing. Yes. Right? Boris is flipping it around in his and his fingers. I, I, I looked on the internet. I was hoping someone on the internet would actually go through and do a video of how many times he actually clicked it, because I couldn't keep track. Uh, also, uh, here we get the first of a three-picture deal for BMW. I was about to come go on a rant, but go on. That's why you don't like this movie. No. Oh, mm. So, uh, yeah. So, he drives a BMW Z3, which is... It just inappropriate. This is the first time that Bond. <laughs> I drove that in Germany. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. Great. It's it's a cool. Car. It was Fine. cool. Yeah, it, on the autobahn. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what? You know what's faster? A Mazda Miata. So uh, I can't this, fit in a Mazda Miata, Zach. I just don't <laughs> like my British Secret Service agent driving a German car. It feels wrong. Give him a Jag. Uh, give him an Aston. Like World War Two was a long time ago. Give him a Bentley. Let it go. Uh, I don't like uh, that. But earlier in the movie, he does drive an Aston Martin DB5, which is the like the Goldfinger car, and he drives it. In the next did your movie. grandpa help on this movie too? Is that why you don't like it? No, <laughs> just uh, wondering. It's just I, I'm. We have a BMW, and we have a, a Pierce Brosnan. Uh, Joel, tier 001 for me. Easy. 001. Oh, tier 001 for me as yeah. well. I have been bashing on this, and I'm going to give it a tier 001. This Thank is, you. This is one of the, the <laughs> better. Yeah, you make jerk. me so this mad. This is one of the better movies in the franchise. It's so <laughs> what? Wait, you've been yeah. bashing on this whole time. We just defended it for 10 extra minutes because you. <laughs> we we were called you the. You. Uh, we called you take the. Uh, uh. And I'll tell you why. The supporting cast. I, I, the supporting I, cast I'm, is stacked. Sincerely, I don't. Even the general, what's his name? He's so good. Uh, I don't love Joe Don Baker. Oh no, wait, no, 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 no. Why but he is in this movie okay. though? Why did they use Joe Don Baker as Wade, who's who not even sh- Felix Slider? Should be Felix Slider. Uh, yeah. But they they choose Wade and Jack Wade. He was yeah. just he was just barely the Doesn't main bad sense. guy two movies earlier. Right. But why? Be- because of the supporting cast here, they overcome uh, what I think is a fairly weak James Bond and Pierce Brosnan. You're uh, wrong. We yeah. already booped it. And this is directed by Martin Campbell, who would go on to direct Casino Royale. So, what a great yeah. director to reboot uh, a franchise. Yeah. Also, uh, Agent 007 killed 47 people in this movie, making this the highest amount of people James Bond killed in a single movie. Because he took out a couple like bases. Yeah, he blew one. up some stuff. Yeah, The action, I think, in this one is the most... Um, I don't want to say realistic, but it's the most level-headed in all of the Brosnan films. Yeah. And particularly that, you mentioned that it, opening scene. It's great. But it does seem to be a pattern of James Bond movies to start off a little more grounded and then get more ridiculous as you go on. So the more movies you get, 
the more crazy in space mm-hmm. you get. And one more thing with gadgets. We have entered full laser watch territory. Yeah. Yeah. And CGI. <sighs> this is the first James Bond movie that uses CGI. It's so not super good. Convincing. Oh, by the name Goldeneye uh, comes from uh, uh, Ian Fleming's, Fleming's estate. Yep. Because he had an Operation Goldeneye. We talked about that earlier, but just specifically here, I want to mention it. So it's still time. using references to Ian Fleming's work, the author of the James Bond novels. Yeah. But not actually using them. All right. I am going to move on to the next one Let's and walk away because uh, we're going to go to 1997's Tomorrow Never Dies. James Bond sets out to stop a media mogul's plan to introduce war between the UK and China in order to obtain exclusive global media coverage. So the villain this time around is Elliot Carver, played by Jonathan Price. Yes. Uh, he is this media mogul, like you said, who is... It, let's be honest. The villain here is Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Mark Zuckerberg, in many ways. Well, I mean, well, even at, the then, time, yeah. at the time, at the time, time yeah. it was still Rupert Murdoch. You know? But yeah, the, the villain here is creating bad things happening and so we can write a new story about him. So he's already writing the story before Which is it crazy, because that used to seem so silly, right? Yes. And now it's like, what is it? This has probably aged better than any Bond movie out there. And then you got the the fitness center henchman. Uh, yeah, Stamper. that's true, huh? He's got the bleached hair and the headset. He's like, okay, kill two more people. Let's go. <laughs> Who in a very early franchise move is dubbed in this movie. Yeah. What? Sadly. I'm yeah. all surprised by dubbing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then we also have the Bond girl. It's uh, Colonel Wei Lin, played by uh, Michelle Yao. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Who just, really who just finished the Jackie Chan movie recent, uh, before this one. Was it Rumble uh, the Bronx or Super, Super Cop? Cop? Super Cop. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then also, she in would a, go on to be in um, Crush and Tiger. Yes. In a very small or short performance, uh, may, maybe more of a cameo, but Terry Hatcher as Paris Carver. So pretty. So pretty. So beautiful. I, I, and she is one of those James Bond girls that tragic end, but yes. her, it's an impactful one where I was like, wow, that's, that's really heartbreaking. Apparently, they d- detested each other on set. Really? Yeah. Brosnan and, and Hatcher. Well, do you know why? Because Monica Bellucci actually auditioned to play the role. And they, what? Yeah, yeah. And they wouldn't give it to her. And Brosnan was really upset. He said she was born to be in a Bond movie. Like, what are you doing? She and should she, be the main and Bond she girl. Was in, what, and like she wasn't. And she wasn't cast. Later. Yeah. And then so they, they got Terry Hatcher. And he's like, OK, I guess she got the job. But whereas, like, he and Michelle Yao really got along, this is less of a romantic chemistry type no, of movie. More of a buddy cop. A buddy cop movie. And yeah. I, that's where I think this movie excels, is the action, and specifically with Michelle Yao. And I also think the soundtrack. Fantastic. Yes, much uh, better. But, but the, this, the uh, Michelle Yao part, when the, the dual motorcycle yes. part yes. is the most probably the most memorable thing about it this is. movie, and I absolutely enjoy uh, it. I'd say between the, the we're handcuffed together motorcycle oh, BMW and the remote Chase, controlled car. And the remote yeah. controlled BMW. I love the remote control. The soundtrack, the, everything that's happening in that, that is one of my favorite James Bond moments of all time is the remote controlled uh, car. Uh, particularly the way it ends, I actually think is a hoot, where yeah. they shoot a rocket, but the windshields broken so, so it just goes, goes right through, through the car <laughs> i you know again i wish it was like i love how a, the different car the but. saw pops up at just the right height to cut the cable that they're trying to stop him with Perfect. Mm-hmm. beautiful yeah. uh but the most ridiculous thing about this movie is obviously uh, carver's one-handed typing on his <laughs> keyboard oh my gosh i it's laughed so hard so when ridiculous I <laughs> I'm like you're not, you're not even trying man and then yes. as, as you mentioned on the bacon bit uh, or bacon bit kent you said you mentioned that the, the opening credits "Tomorrow Never Dies" by Sheryl Crow, good song. Good song. But the end credits, uh, Katie Lang does a song called "Surrender." Yeah, and it which is, still uses "Tomorrow Never Dies." It does, and it is actually a much more Bondy song. It is, which I kind of enjoyed. Uh, did you know Anthony Hopkins was actually cast as Carver, and he was in the movie for like three days, but the script wasn't quite finished, and he just got annoyed, and he's like, "I'm going to go be in this movie called uh, Mask of Zorro," directed by Martin Campbell yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this was the first James Bond film made after the death of producer Albert R. Broccoli. He passed away a few months after Goldeneye, I believe. And then uh, this did better at the box office than Goldeneye because I think the like sometimes sequels will do that even if they're not as good as the original movie because it's like the hype is there. Yeah. Uh, but it did not open. It is the only one of Pierce Brosnan's Bond films to not open at number one because it opened the same day as Titanic. Oh yeah. Do you guys really like this movie? Want me to give my vote? Go for it. Yeah. Tier Double O One. I Are re- you serious? I really like this This is movie. one of the worst in the franchise. Oh, I disagree completely. Yeah. This one is aged better than most of them, like I said. I think Brosnan, who's really come into his own, the action is really fun to watch. Oh, it's too much. Really? Especially at the end. You watched No Time to Die and loved it. That movie's full of forgettable action. The end, the end of this is 
nonsense action. It's a Bond movie. It's going nowhere. It's so a the Carver director, still ship. The, it's a Bond movie. The director of this movie was brought in to punch up the dramatic stuff, and he literally didn't even direct the action. They just gave it to hey, the second unit. And said, you're talking about it. the director, uh, Roger Spottis- Spottiswood, who also directed Turn and Hooch and Stop or My Mom yeah. Will Shoot. Oh, he's, oh he, he's terrible because this is a very poorly made movie. It's 119 minutes, and they stretch it to get it there. The action the intro is awesome. The the uh, intro the is where so he's fun. stealing the the jet that has nuclear bombs. Yes, cool. I like that's it. cool. That's an awesome part. The car again. I just mentioned the car thing. Yeah, really cool. The um the the motorcycle fine. The random like the random the henchman's cool. Uh, random Price guys. Is the villain heavy. is the only Bond villain with a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> random guys so just attack for no reason in this movie and then the end is just not it, this is a Marvel movie Kent. what do you oh, oh you don't this stop. is yeah. absolutely a, a Marvel movie die another day I'm fine with Marvel, Marvel movies movie. that's baiting Kent this yeah is, no. you really are you, you are blinded by your nostalgia this is a 003 and watch it again score. sir I, so, I literally watched it two days ago and I hate it my impression of the, the Pierce Brosnan era is basically Golden Eye is the best everything else is blah a diminishing returns and then I watched this again yeah Absolutely enjoyed it. This is a tier 001 for me. Yeah! Same. I love the soundtrack. I love... Finger! Uh, I love the villain. The the villain in this, I love his motivation. It's actually kind of terrifying to think about that. Terry Hatcher is great. Michelle Yeoh is great. Zach, Um, we're so sorry. The soundtrack is fantastic. There's so much to love about this movie, Zach. I don't know why you hate it. I think it's poorly made. So I gave a lot of, of guff to Pierce Brosnan. I do think he's better in this You're movie. just mad because yeah. this is when I, I James Bond traded his Walther PPK for a PP, P99. Oh, that's such a bad scene. He's like, I always wanted one of these. Q wouldn't let me have it. <laughs> so now I got it. You know. uh, also, P99, uh, we talked about way. James Bond killing the most people in GoldenEye. Yeah. Uh, the estimated body count in this one is 197, making this the highest death toll in any James Bond movie. Wow. And Tomorrow Never Dies. Let's Strange. move on. Mm. Okay. So glad it's well, a uh, tier 001 on yeah, that. T- 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 terrible movie. So in another one you guys probably love, 1999's The World Is Not Enough. Uh, uh, we talked about this in the bacon bit. We love the song yeah. by Garbage. We think it's fantastic. Uh, synopsis. James Bond uncovers a nuclear plot while protecting an oil heiress from her former kidnapper, an international terrorist who can't feel pain. How many times does <laughs> he can't feel pain? Many. It's such a, a Bond lot. movie trope. But they could have done so much more with it. Yeah. And so, instead, it's like, I can't feel anything. It, it is. And so, it's, the, it's the guy from Full Monty. Yeah. It it's is. Robert Carlyle, who's a very good actor. Zocus. Yeah. So he's Renard. I mean, he, he fits perfectly in a Bond movie, honestly. Yeah. And he's former KGB agent turned terrorist. And Sophie Marceau is a great Bond girl. She's Electric great. King. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, well. And then there's. There's you, another Bond yeah. girl here. Let's, let's not talk about her yet. Let's Denise not talk about Richards. Her. No. The anchor of this movie, the albatross around the neck of this movie, <laughs> is Denise Richards as Dr. Christmas Jones. Okay, 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 okay. If we could recast, I'm not saying this is a, a, a really good movie. If we could recast with anyone else in the world, would this be a much better movie? Would it help the script? Would it help Most the plot? Most of my ire is at Same. Denise Richards trying to act like she's a nuclear physicist, and she's not even a good actress to start with. So it's already a, a you know bad start, but then to try to make her seem really, really smart. Mm. So she was actually attracted to the role of Dr. Christmas Jones. She found the part to be brainy, athletic, and has a depth of character, which she felt was unlike any previous Bond girls. Like she'd never seen Holly Goodhead in a movie before, mm-hmm. which sounds silly when I say it out loud. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but yeah. This is also Q's final appearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, he passes the torch to John Cleese, and it's it's kind of sad it's because a, such a sad story. When you when you know what happens, yeah. because his last line is uh, he's telling James Bond, "Always have an exit strategy," and then the floor lo- floor lowers, and he never leaves. let them see you bleed. And then shortly after this movie came out, wasn't it? Short, just, uh, I think it was just a few months after he passed away, and you think, well, he was an old guy. He passed away from a, like a freak car crash. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't, it wasn't even old age or anything. He right. wasn't sick. He just, yeah, it's such a sad story. It is. So they, they weren't intending on being done with him, but I think they did kind of build in the just in case. Let's bring in a uh, just a John, Cleese. John Cleese in this yeah. movie. Yeah. R at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If he's Q, are you R? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But this uh, also, we were talking about the cold blooded killing uh, James Bond did last mm-hmm. uh, movie. In this one, he shoots Electra. And to me, that felt off. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like... She was even... I think she might have been unarmed at the time, too, if I remember right. She's trying to get away. And he well, okay. she, she's she's on the phone, and she calls in an attack order. That's right. But and he so he, he, he feels like he needs to take her off. But it really felt off he, for a But he movie. immediately after, though, you could tell there was a bit of remorse there, which is so, rare. And that's where I think this movie is... So, it's such a mixed bag, because it, it should be better. Because the story can be quite good, because Elektra... 
like there's l- almost love there between Bond and Electra. Mm-hmm. And well, and this is basically Golden Eye with oil. Yes, it's and very similar. We're trying to get rid of their oil, so my oil's more valuable. But Electra is a Bond girl who needs help. He falls in love. Like she is almost the new Tracy at this point. Yeah. But then she's the ultimate villain. Yeah. yeah. Which she's missing her earlobe, <laughs> which makes her a Bond villain. And Bond didn't notice that when they've been together. Just saying. Just kissing. They're her just kissing. On. Necking. Yeah, precisely. Probably on the ear. I don't know. There's a lot of silliness here. This is, I remember when seeing this, and I was very forgivable to Tomorrow Never Dies at the time, but when I saw this movie, I'm like, oh, so these movies kind of suck. Yeah. I See, I don't understand why you th- you go for you know all positive on Tomorrow Never Dies, but then don't feel... I the think same about it, this movie. This, nose, this is a nosedive. This was yeah, that's what it felt like to me. But you this, were in a stealth boat, so it works. Oh, okay. okay. The boat scene is fun. It awesome. goes on a little long. But my favorite, uh, uh, my, he strains his tie in the water. That is water. my favorite moment when he goes under the water in a submarine road, and he just straightens his. By the way, improvised there. by Pierce Brosnan, and it works right. great. Which I, I, I was and, thinking, how many times did to dunk him for that? That he did it in Goldeneye as well. He when he's in the tank. Yes. Oh, the tank chase. How do we not talk about the tank chase in Goldeneye? We what can't go back. We can't bond. go back. Only go forward. Tier one movie. Yeah. This one also has saw helicopters. Yes. Which that, are crazy. That, yay! They cut a BMW Z8 in half. <laughs> Hagrid almost drowning in a pool of caviar. That was fun, too. <laughs> yeah, Rob. <laughs> Out of context, it sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy this the, one. The uh, ski jacket of this that one. turns yes. into an igloo. But not as much as Roger Ebert, who gave it three and a half stars out of four and called it, quote, splendid comic thriller, exciting and graceful, endlessly inventive. Wow. What the heck was he thinking? I don't know. Oh, and the boat chase, by the way? Yeah. It took him weeks to film. uh, Seven weeks to shoot because the Thames River in England has a nine mile per hour boat speed limit. Wow. So they had to like make it look like they were going fast. All right. So, Zach, play your hand. 002. Oh, that seems pretty high. I like That seems really high. I'm like, giving this a 003. I don't understand. This is, you give the, the last one, which is. They're two different at, movies. At, at least the same. You, you think it's better. Zach, think of where you went from Dalton. You He had two movies. You went, great, terrible. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying, like, the last movie the, the is, they might as well be the same. I like this one a little Disagree, bit better. Because Dr. Christmas Jones was not in Toronto. No, Christmas yes, Jones is that's horrible. That's precisely it. But did you see it when you guys were nine? No. no. Okay. I was 18. There we go. I was 19. I, this came out when I was nine. I probably saw it when I was 10. A 10 year old doesn't know if Denise Richards is a good actor. A 10 year old goes, <laughs> hey, <laughs> but an, <laughs> no, an 18 year old notices that even more. <laughs> no, I, I'm just, it's so it, 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 to me, uh, and this is, I'll, I'll say, this is a low tier two. But, wow. But I think this is totally watchable. So, Zach, I'm going to actually agree with you yeah. because I didn't like this a lot back then, but when I did the full watch and i never seen the roger moore movies back two years ago when we started this challenge Mm -hmm. i watched all those in sequence and then i got to this one i said wow this has aged a lot better because i've seen a lot crappier james bond movies and i watched it again and every time i watch it it gets slightly better and so it is a double oh two i disagree i disagree this is not one that i enjoy your double oh three this is a double oh three okay again um this this movie when when we talk about brosnan's performance i do think he is he is now what he is. And and that thing is a terrible hurt actor. Have you noticed the corners of his mouth anytime he's in pain? They go really far out to the side. Uh, yeah, because I've seen both Mamma Mia movies. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for, sure, for sure. And also, I just have a problem, it, it, mostly in Goldeneye, but anytime that he's wet. Hey, and his, we've already talked about this. Anytime that his hair's wet, he's just Stuart from Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and I just want to have a drive-by fruiting just every time. <laughs> Drive All by right. fruiting, okay. Well, yes. let's, let's move into his last I got movie. the reference. 2002's Die Another Day. James Bond is sent to investigate the connection between a North Korean terrorist and a diamond mogul who is funding the development of an international space weapon. Once again, Brosnan owns intros. Uh, Craig actually gives him a pretty good run for his money, if you they know got, what I'm yeah. saying. But Brosnan's intro in this one is fantastic. This is with the uh, the hovercrafts in the minefield in North Korea. Right? Hovercrafts yes. are so freaking cool. But this is also the one where James Bond in the intro doesn't get away to find yeah. another day. He and that's gets what, caught. That's what I like about it. It's memorable because there's a consequence for but James then Bond. Then it goes into the Madonna song. Yeah, and then it one. then it gets ruined from the re- from there uh, on so out. So okay, once again, I, you I? have uh, Pierce Brosnan fourth and final time as James Bond. Yeah. Uh, you have Rosamund Pike as Miranda Frost. In her first movie, by the way. Yeah. Maybe. Toby Stevens as Gustav Graves. And then. By the way, son of Dame Maggie Smith. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. 100%. I see it through those VR glasses. <laughs> 
And then you have the albatross, Jinx. Halle Berry should give her Oscar back. She won the Oscar as they were filming this. Look, she did she when went, she did Catwoman. She left filming to go to the Oscars and won an Academy Award for Best Actress and then came back to this movie and gave that performance. Okay, I have a confession. I think this is two-thirds of a really solid James Bond movie. I think there's a lot here because, because okay, it owns it. Okay, because think, it owns yeah, it. Yes, the ice because castle. We, again, we know where we the are. The ice castle. I am completely on board with the that. Clear, was a, the clear plastic castle. Well, <laughs> the, the ice hotel. I am completely on board with that. The invisible car. I am actually okay with that. Yeah, I could do without that. What I cannot abide is the terrible VR stuff they use in yeah. this and the uh, parasailing CGI. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I think take every big CGI set piece, tone it down or take it out, and you have a a solid, if not really good, James Bond movie here. I think the over emphasis on CGI and also the weird filmmaking here with a lot of uh, snappy speed ramps and strange yeah, slow yeah, motion the, and the speed up, the slow way down. that the camera's moving around, the chase at the end on ice with Bond's Aston, which good news, he's in an Aston Martin again, but uh, Bond's Aston Martin and Diamond Acne's. Uh, Jaguar. It's just like a diamond, diamond acne. acne. Diamond acne. <laughs> diamond acne. A guy who has a diamonds in his, embedded in his face. Yeah. It was stupid. That is just a button off, right? I'm going to push this button. You're going to push the same button. We're going to shoot missiles. I'm going to shoot missiles. You're going to do this. And yeah. it's just, again, it goes back to that Tomorrow Never Dies ending of this is just but too Jinx much. almost drowning in a hotel room that's melting was pretty stressful for oh, me. I was rooting for the water on that uh, one. <laughs> by the way, speaking of Jinx, this is the first uh, overt uh, scene with uh, it's it's with um, Jinx and mm-hmm. James Bond. Watch this a There's couple a nights weird ago. Fruit eating moment too. It's, it's just kind of like it's the drive by fruiting. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but uh, there's also like you mentioned in the bacon bit a Madonna cameo in this one. Yeah, in she's the a sword teacher. in the least monitored fencing school ever. They just let students do whatever they want and fight right. however they want. Uh, uh, well, and really, the villain here is Elon Musk. Yeah, I see that. He is, right. this Gustav Graves is totally just Elon Musk. Elon Musk looks <laughs> in like a he's had a whole face off sort VR of thing too. Mech suit. It's Elon Musk in a VR mech suit. That ending mech suit is so bad. Oh, this, but the, Miranda Frost, the, the, uh, late, the her uh, her final bikini fighting outfit. Yeah, what's that about? I don't understand why she put it know. on, but she looks great in it. We didn't mention the laser fight with Jinx, <laughs> right? Oh, just yes. like strapped to the back, lasers. It's, everywhere. it's really sad. It seems like every line they wrote, they wrote as a pun, yes, or as a double entendre. I can um, read your every move. Read this. And every character, too. Not only Bond, but Jinx, Gustav yes. Graves, Miranda Frost. All these people are using... This is why I call it a Marvel movie. Yeah. Every character speaks with the same voice. Yep. So, for example, I'm going to throw in a couple puns here, but Bond is talking to Diamond Face? Yes. Diamond Acne. Diamond Acne. What's yes. Zhao, I think his name is? Yes. And he, uh, Bond says, I've missed your sparkling personality. And then Zhao punches Bond and says, how's that for a punchline? Oh, okay, and well, then the, the oh, whole God. DNA remapping thing was just ridiculous. It was so bad. So Sir Roger Moore, apparently a movie critic, not yeah. of his own movies, but he actively voices displeasure with this movie, citing the invisible car and the weak CGI as being a low for the franchise. And yeah. he's right. Roger Moore said. Uh, Roger Moore he's said. He's been in. He said. No, he said. I thought it just went too far, and that's for me. The first Bond in space, invisible cars <laughs> and dodgy CGI footage. Please, that's great. It's it's the CGI that brings it. But down. he's no Roger Ebert, who gave this movie three out of four stars, saying this movie has the usual impossible stunts, but has just as many scenes that are lean and tough enough to fit in any modern. He's action a fanboy. Ebert uh, apparently is, is drinking that Ooh. Brosnan Kool Aid. I like the stuff in Cuba. Yeah. yeah, I think that all like, looks it pretty has, well. It has good moments, but it's just weighed down by so many other things. I give this a tier 003. It's a tier 003. I'm going to give it a 002. Whoa! <laughs> Zach, it's hey, this is a this low is, point. This is one of the worst. This is a low point in the franchise. It, it got bumped up. Because you uh, think it's two thirds. What? what is below this, Zach? Most of Roger Moore's career. Oh. Um, but it got bumped up because you guys, I'm telling you, have nostalgia glasses for those early 90s or mid 90s ones. Nope. This is the Bond movie I've probably seen the most. Why? I was, I was oh, 12. Oh, so wait, so we have 13, nostalgia glasses? Right? Yeah. You have your you nostalgia glasses. You gave it a glasses, tier uh, one. How are those logic no, glasses? You're giving you're this a tier two. No. Joel, your, your glasses say logic on them. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. It's actually VR, uh, the amazing <laughs> VR head from no. back in 2002. This is, oh. um, this um, also betrayed Money Penny. Yeah, I know. I did I not agree. like that ending scene with Money no, Penny. It's, it's like they had that they put that ending there as a joke, yeah. and it kind of ruined the relationship between Bond and Money Penny. I did not like it. Yeah. I think this movie, honestly, like the first half is a tier one Bond movie, and I think the last last half is a bottom 
barrel tier three. So in it just the, averages with the out. VR right? outfits. I've seen this one probably the most. It came out when I was. You've uh, got your nostalgia young. glasses. I do. On. I do. Tier two. Uh, but no, this is like two. the next lowest. If I was to rank them, this is very low on the list. Uh, I just don't like Roger Moore, and so this one at least has some cool cars. So I'll 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 take it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not proud of it being 002, mm. but it is. You're a wild card on this show. A little bit. I'm willing to w- admit my score is incorrect, just like you guys should on Tomorrow Never Dies. No, nope. never. But this is unequivocally a low point in the franchise. We're talking on the same level as A View to a Kill. Like, well, this is a low think point. I think A View a low point. Think about the time this came out. This is when movies were starting to change. Like superhero movies, like Spider-Man came out this year. Yeah. People expected more, I think. Yeah. It's really... A tragedy that Pierce Brosnan didn't get to explore the role in a more serious way. I feel like he he is one of the better Bonds, but it's just underwritten dealt a bum hand yes. of movies. He he's a it's a sad story for him. Well, yeah. he he signed a deal for four films as James which he Bond. was in. He was in four films, and then contract negotiations happened. Yeah, and. They weren't as impressed well, with that box up. Not control. only that, but like right before Die Another Day came out, 9-11 happened yeah. and the world changed yeah. and it, it changed the way we even view and accept movies. And so when Die Another Day came out with its campiness, everyone was kind of like, you know, it's escapism, but maybe not kind of what I want to see from James Bond, this international super spy. Mm-hmm. And so even the producers were like, oh, well, look, Pierce Brosnan kind of has the stink of the Bond franchise on him and we're going to. Kind of make him the scapegoat for it. Yeah. He's the only actor who wanted to be Bond. Yes. He wanted to be Bond sooner, and he wanted to be Bond. He wanted to continue Longer. on. This guy would have smashed Roger Moore's record if they would have let him. Yeah. And Agreed. It's, and it's so unfortunate because I, I, I harped on him, but this guy wanted to be there. He was given terrible material to work with. All right. And do you feel like if he was given Dalton-type material, he would have killed it? If, he, if Pierce Brosnan was, oh. was in The Living Daylights... I think we were talking a totally different trajectory and well, in, more success. Okay, so Timothy Dalton was 40 when he started. Yeah. Pierce Brosnan was 41 when he started. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if he would have started younger, he probably could have done a lot more yeah, bonding. And I, he would have been, it would have been a lot more bonding. solid <laughs> yeah. through. Um, and, and again, because this, these movies got so goofy, it's not Brosnan's fault. You know, so I feel bad for the guy. Wasn't he not told that he was going to be Bond anymore? As far the rumor has it that he basically found out with the rest of us with the press release that another guy had been cast and he was kind of heartbroken. Brutal. Another guy? He, what yeah. other guy? Mr. Daniel Craig. Wait, that's James Blonde. Why is that guy blonde? I mean, admittedly, when he was announced, his hair was quite long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I only, like I said, I mentioned this before, I knew him from uh, The Power of One where he was this horrible oh. Nazi. Yeah, I know from Layer Cake, Matthew yeah. Vaughn movie, very good. Sons of Perdition, you know? uh, yeah. But let's uh, talk uh, Road about Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition. That's yes. Right. So let's talk about Zach. 2006's Casino Royale, not to be confused with 1967. After earning 00 status and a license to kill, secret agent James Bond sets out on his first mission as 007. Bond must defeat a private banker funding terrorists in a high stakes game of poker at Casino Royale, Montenegro. So we talk about coming to realism in the modern Bond era. Here we are. Yes. Like they're like, this is hey, the, even our gadgets are just going to be kind of realistic. There's a, a phone detonator. Okay. That's realistic. Cool. Yep. Hey, an explosive keychain. Kind of realistic. Sure. You know, we'll leave it there. A bomb on a keychain. Hey, Kent. Right. What came out the year before this? It would be uh, Batman Begins. Batman Begins. This is Bond Begins. This yeah, is when yeah, people yeah. are like, oh, gritty reboot origin story. We can do that too. And uh, it stars uh, Daniel Craig. We mentioned this first time. Ava Green as Vesper Lind. And Bloody Eye. <laughs> Le Chief. Uh, Le Mads Mikkelsen is Le Chief. And starting out with You Know My Name by Chris Cornell, which yep. I I am perfectly happy that they got over the uh, seductive opening sure. credits and overtly uh, seductive opening credits and went with this really cool stylized thing, which we already talked about the bake a bit, but I love the opening credits. And I went, this is a different movie. Yeah. But it didn't feel Bondy to me. It didn't feel like James Bond. It felt it felt like a Bourne movie, a Jason Bourne movie. Well... It did for the first 20 minutes, but then he plays poker for like an hour and a half. There's a lot of a lot of Texas Hold'em in this. Yeah. Which, that's which a, they got rid of Baccarat and gave us Texas Hold'em. It should be Baccarat. It, you can tell uh, the franchise all throughout has always been of its time. The two most of its time things in this movie are Texas Hold'em and that body world exhibit. Oh, yes. You know, oh, yeah. don't forget yep. Nokia. There's a lot of Nokia <laughs> yeah. in this oh, as There's well. Nokia in the current ones, too. Yeah. Uh, this has a number of scenes that I will always remember. Uh, Go on. The, the car crash. Yes. Doing all those flips broke, was insane. Broke the world record 
Yeah, for, for most for for most barrel rolls. Most, oh, wait, was full. that real? Uh, yeah, that uh, was the CG. They, they that was real. They they canned it. They have a little piston on the bottom that shoots out. It and looks the car. fake. So the Aston Martin DBS, beautiful car. Um, oh, I see where your head is at on this one. It had so much downforce that was as it was moving that it wasn't rolling properly, and yeah. so they put a piston cannon to launch against the road and shoot. You can actually see the smoke coming off of it. Yeah, it shoots the car up, but then it was so light that once it actually got into the air, it rolled over seven times. It's one of those weird wow. records where it's the world record for the most barrel rolls assisted by a cannon. Sheesh. Apparently, there's other records out there for just barrel rolls that aren't assisted by a cannon. So, Zach, you were probably eight when this movie came out. Uh, were you were, 16? Were you a Bond fan at this point? So, no. Okay. I watched a bunch of Die Another Day, and I probably wore out my welcome on that. And this movie came out, and for whatever reason, I, I never saw it in theater. And then my dad tried to show it to me, and I fell asleep. And it took me uh, maybe two years to actually finally see it. Why is this a really good but still sleepy movie? Because I agree, it's a sleepy movie. I don't know. It's got some good parts, though. That's the problem. Is those those good parts, like the, it, the sinking okay. building, the black and white is opening, it, torture it, scene. Par- is it better? Parkour. Is it better that this is a new kind of origin movie, like you said, Joel? That this is a begins type movie. Yes. With that first scene. Well, and I was yes. very harsh on it when it first came out because, like I said, didn't because like the parkour. Movie. Well, the parkour scene was so it's much fun. It's super cool, but it is very born like But I highly, I'm watching it again, highly, highly, oh, highly course. enjoyed it. It is a crazy, crazy opening scene. Uh, and, and he's like doing all these stunts. Daniel Craig knocked out his two front teeth during this movie when they were doing a fight scene in Prague. That a dentist had to fly in and replace him. That's just, it's it, insane. It is really interesting that like with both Brosnan and Craig, maybe the producers weren't as confident in their main star because... It's like, hey, we need to kind of get him ready for the role. And so the supporting cast is, are better actors than the Bonds that they're there with. For, yeah. for example, Mads Mikkelsen is amazing. Yeah. We have cool. Mr. White in the movie. By the way, yeah. very, in, very, speaking very of limited, role, yes. Le Chief, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, yeah. is the first leading Bond villain in the productions to die, but not by the hand of James Bond, yeah. a Bond girl, or a Bond ally. Mm-hmm. It's a completely different organization. Yeah. yeah, well, it's his his doings caught up with him. Yeah. Yeah. But well, that's we also kind of weird that the main Bond villain doesn't even get killed by James Bond. We have Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter back in the series. Mm-hmm. Best Felix Leiter. And Eva Green. Eva Green I know your feelings. Carries, I know your feelings. carries this movie. She's really, really good in it. Yeah. Like, you, you feel for her because she is caught up in this, this situation and she's in way over her head. She gets overwhelmed with it all. Yeah. And you just feel so bad for her. Well, it's, and then you don't. Then you get mad at her for what she did, but then you still feel bad for her. Wow, you sound like Daniel Craig right now. I get really frustrated because you're I haunted by I her. I don't know aren't how to you? feel about Vesper Lind. I feel very strongly for her. But it's do. weird because she seems like throughout the movie, you're like, oh, it's just another Bond girl. But what, then when the plot takes place. Like, you don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It, now I feel like it's sacred all of a sudden. Hmm. Like, it, it haunts Bond for the. Uh, haunts Craig's Bond for the rest of the franchise. And you're kind of like, is she that important? <laughs> I do feel that. That they, ha- they hang on to that. Right. For all of uh, Craig's tenure. And that kind of bothered me. Because, I don't know. All right, I'm that. jumping on in here. Yeah. It's a tier 001. Okay. I do feel like the middle part is a little bit sleepy. And then even when it, you think it's over, the end. right? The end? You're kind of like, wait. And then it gets to the sinking of Venice. And you're I like, always forget about the post-poker game. Yes. In my mind, it's like Maverick. And it ends like the, the, poker the game. romantic stuff. Maverick. Yeah. But the romantic stuff preceding like the tragic stuff. Yeah. You're like, but really? Is it still going? The, he's, he's recovering his self. Yeah. His, his After th- listening to Die Another Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He <laughs> right. sat on a chair with no bottom and yeah. hurt his body. But for what it does for the franchise... And restarting things after Die Another Day. This is exactly what the franchise needed. It is a 001 just for that reason. I will also agree this is a tier 001. I may have been too harsh on it when it first came out. Because watching it decades later. It's cool. It still holds up. I've never seen Bourne. So I don't know that it's copying that. I don't know what You've it's You've never seen to any do. of the Jason Bourne movies? No, it's on my shame list. And I still haven't seen it. Hey, you're okay. Yeah, this is a masterpiece. A masterpiece. Wow. Bold uh, words. This is Bold words. one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, David Arnold, the composer, is in peak form here. The score here is amazing. Really good. Really helps set up. You're, you're totally right. Much like Goldeneye, directed by Martin Campbell as well. We've got a new Bond, so let's throw every supporting actor we can at him. And it all it's an interesting story. It's based off the original James Bond novel by Ian Fleming. Uh, and this movie is stellar. 001. All right. Now we jump, uh, what is it, two years later? Yeah. Yeah, 2007. 
for Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace. Quantum of Solace. James Bond descends into mystery as he tries to stop a mysterious organization from eliminating a country's most valuable resource. It's water. <laughs> So we have a the villain uh, is Dominic Green, who's a mid level manager, forgettable villain. Yeah, in qua- in the quantum group, intentionally so. He he refused yeah. to have any sort of disfigurement, uh, and yeah. he doesn't have any sort well, of no, personality. No, I think actually the point in the theme is that he is a goon. He is a, a, a lackey, and for some somehow he is actually the main villain in the story, mm-hmm. yeah. even though he's only part of Quantum, which then somehow becomes Spectre. Uh, by the way, shortest runtime of any James Bond movie. Quantum so, of Solace, one hundred six minutes. So that's the backstory of this one. There's a big backstory. Big here. backstory. Here. Well, because the writers strike. Yes. So they finished this movie without any edits. I think two hours before the writers strike, like they were rushing. Mm-hmm. And generally, a script will need some fine tuning on the set. A lot of fine tuning. Yeah. And they didn't have time to do that, so basically they were filming it. Daniel Craig had to write a lot of it, mm-hmm. as did the uh, director. Daniel Craig, as well. the writer. No. Oh, the actor. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Daniel Craig, basically the stuntman. Well, and if you notice in this one, Bond talks more than he usually does. Yes. Like Daniel Craig's James Bond is a more stoic kind of guy. But if you on a rewatch, I'm like, wow, he's sure talking a lot. Chatty Cathy. It's over almost there. like he wrote the script. What, what <laughs> happens in this movie? Uh, so there's oil. No. What? It's oil I, I know there's is there's an oil pipeline and they drive. No, that's. I that's know that Jim Arnton. Uh, there's like an Carlinco. allusion to Goldfinger. Yes, because uh, Strawberry Fields, which I think is a fantastic Bond girl name. Yeah, I uh, wish she was in the movie longer. Yeah, and they have that homage where she's covered in oil, much like uh, the Masterson, Jill Masterson was Jill yes, Masterson. covered in gold in Goldfinger, which is another it's a very sad scene. Uh, I felt for Strawberry Fields because I enjoyed her character for the short time she was in the movie. There's the scene where they're at the opera. All quantum when the James, opera. Bond, okay. James Bond has entered the chat. That's kind of cool. I was actually cool with that scene. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm cool with this whole movie with the great big asterisk. Huh. You, you have to... This is a double feature. This movie does not stand on its own. But it's mm. the very first movie in the entire franchise that is an actual true and proper sequel from a story and plot standpoint. Yeah. Well, it carries on exactly Which is both where Casino Royale... A, a pro and a con. Yeah. So, so you have to watch this one immediately after watching Casino Royale. It was meant to be the second part of a trilogy. Yeah. And this movie performed so poorly... Oh, I mean, it still made money. Poorly. P- performed so poorly, quote it, unquote. It performed less, it made less than Casino Royale. That they still decided to, money. they were like, it's too dour. We're not going to make a trilogy to that. We're still going to tie the movies together, but we're going to leave this whole quantum thing in the background. But I will say this. Even though her story isn't totally fleshed out, I think Olga Kirilenko She's good. is amazing. Yeah. Amazing? Uh, amazing. I, I kind of uh, love Cam- her. Camille, I believe. And she's not really used as this uh, romantic foil for oh, Bond. She seemed kind of like a taskmaster to me. Hmm. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but I, I really enjoy her as a Bond girl slash femme fatale. What do you think with the henchman with the bowl cut? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just, okay, this is a 003. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm going to give it a 003 as well. Uh, they did. Uh, there was a study done by the university in New Zealand that found it to be the most violent film in the franchise, which I found surprising. Really? Yeah, strangely enough, right? Yeah. But uh, also, I uh, this apparently caused some controversy because they filmed it in Chile in the Antofagasta region, but then they said it was part of Bolivia, and the uh, Argentinians were not happy with that, with their country being portrayed as another country. And also, Dominic Green, uh, he was not killed. By the hand of Bond, Bond girl, or Bond ally. Once again, two in a row where James Bond... How's he killed? Him. He gives him a can of motor oil in the desert. So, no. Good luck. So kind of, but not really. I've seen that EFY video. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel Craig was injured at least three times during the making of this movie. He had uh, four stitches in his face, and then he injured his shoulder, which had six surgical screws put into it. Daniel Craig, as much Sheesh. as I bash on him as, as a James Bond... He dedicates himself. He yeah, so punishes that's his body. Why his this. face looks that way. Oh, mm. oh! Wait, but what? we didn't even talk about him at the beach in Casino Royale. Oh, coming out of the scene of uh, doing Honey Rider, the, the Honey, oh. Honey Rider, and Jinx. Mm. Yeah, it, it was the best water surfacing scene in the franchise. Wow, that is I, his James Bond. I, and sincerely, he's I'm not, not even joking shells. because it's it's almost like a yeah. You're used to the beautiful woman doing it, but like men are beautiful too. It's yeah. actually kind of cool. He's not as beautiful as Honey Rider. His but, yeah. pecs are. <laughs> Quantum Assault is huh? friendly. <laughs> what, did you, what did you give it, Joel? I gave it a tier 003. I give this a tier 002. Wow. Uh, I like this movie more than most, mostly on the strength of Camille. Um, yeah. And 
on the heels of Camille de Bondro. Yeah. yeah, on the heels of Casino Royale. I only ever watch Quantum immediately after watching the other. And so it's really like that opening scene. We didn't talk about that where he's driving his Aston Martin oh, with Mr. Immediate. White yeah. in the it. trunk. It's yeah. exactly to the end of like in yeah. Casino Royale. He shoots Mr. White. Isn't it weird how Mr. White is the tie that binds? Yeah, through the series, yeah. he's in several. Of them. Mr. White, yeah. uh, I quit. Mr. White, wait the, the tie. Wait, Mr. White or Jack White? Oh no, nope. <laughs> another nope. way to die. Let's not mention it. Um, let's move on. So I know I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, no, you're wrong. Not, wrong. Not wrong. Wrong. wrong is the word you're looking wrong. for. I'll take that. Okay. But yeah. I do like this movie more than most. I do think it's an uh, enjoyable film. Now we move forward to one that is very popular with a lot of people. So it was two years between the last one. It was four years between Quantum of Solace and we- Let the Sky Fall. 2012's Skyfall. James Bond's loyalty to M is tested when her past comes back to haunt her. When MI6 comes under attack, 007 must track down and destroy the threat, no matter how personal the cost. Now, this is where we're in M being a maternal figure. You know? Yes. This is a different version of M than in the Brosnan franchise. How non Bondy is this movie? How non Bondy is it? I Do mean, we feel like this is the least Bond James Bond? Maybe other than License to Kill. Maybe. Well, but Casino but Royale not, was also not James Bond. It was much more gritty, much more grounded, much more realistic. But it felt like the series. This one feels like a different movie franchise. I would almost say at times transcends the silliness that is James Bond. This is certainly the most beautiful James Bond movie. Except for Silva's face when he takes oh, out the... Uh, the bad CGI My there. wife walked yeah. in right at that part. She's like, what are you watching? It's super scary. Uh, and I mean Javier oh. Bardem yes, playing Javier uh, Bardem. Raul Silva, who is an ex-MI6 operative turned cyber terrorist. And then yeah. you have... I'm not even going to say any of her names right. Uh, Bernice Marlowe uh, as Severine. Well, you say that, Severine. but the Bond girls are not a factor in this movie. No. Except, except for... The Bond girl is M. Yes. No, the precisely. Bond girl she is, is the Bond girl. Yes. Also, you have Eve Moneypenny. Oh, oh yes. yeah, I like her. The low, that, that is the, what really, I don't like her in this movie at oh, all. I don't mind her. She shoots James Bond. Yeah, it's a mistake. It's an accident. And then she's all cocky about it. Yeah. I do not like, no, I do not, not like, the, I do not like the new Money Penny. Do not oh, like do? the new Money Penny. Oh, I, I, quite, I do. Not a fan a of field, nah. I'm not a fan of field agent Money Penny. Mm. She's, I, she's not field agent. But new little Q, he's fine. I like she, Ben Wisham. New little Q. She messed up and got put in a desk. Like, What's what's wrong? But she's just cocky about it. No, she's not. Yes, she is. Uh, once again, gadgets are not really a thing here. He has a Walter PPK S with a palm scanner, so it's like designated for him. The PPK S has a larger grip than the PPK. Okay, and then they, he has a radio detonator, so it's like really they're trying to stay as grounded as possible. Although not exactly Christmas, the plot is one of the least grounded of Craig's tenure because the more I watch this movie and the more I think about it, because when I first saw this movie, I'm like, yeah, that was incredible. Like, that was such a good movie. And the ending did not feel like a Bond movie. Like, it wasn't this big secret fortress battle. It was Home Alone. It's a Home right? Alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it still worked for me. And but it there was, were stakes. There were stakes. It was very tragic. But the more I think about the way the plot plays out... You can't. I can't. No, you can't. The, it's it's okay, guys, one of the guys. most shrug your shoulders. And, and I see yes. this having really liking the movie. Yes. Going, going, that was the most convenient plot that this, could ever this happen. This is definitely a sit and enjoy the ride kind of yes. movie. They, they, they try to get too complicated, but they do. What's his name? Javier Bardem. I can't remember his, his Silva. name. Silva. His plot <laughs> has such great timing. Has to be to the minute. Um, it is amazing. But yes. still, I was caught up in the moment like, whoa. Can I bring you guys into the real world? Yes, please do. What? Uh, so Quantum of Solace came out in 2008. This came out in 2012. What else came out in 2008? Dark, Dark Knight. Dark Knight. And Mamma Mia. Uh, where, it's true. Wait, Starring Dark Knight, you mean the movie where the main villain pretends to get captured only to continue his plan that he has planned all along? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Huh. Yeah. So, and, and the interesting thing about this is, we've talked about this before, Christopher Nolan was a huge fan of the Bond franchise. Mm-hmm. It right. inspires his filmmaking. He goes out and makes Batman movies it that inspires. inspire the James Bond franchise. It's this big circular thing. Right. Uh, this is the only James Bond to gross over $1 billion worldwide. Is, However, ju- just for inflation, Thunderball still reigns supreme. It's still it's because of Roger Deakins, the director of photography. He's amazing. It's He's amazing. a very good looking movie overall. It's a beautiful movie. When uh, they go to that ugly Scottish countryside and it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And Skyfall, Adele. The first Bond song ever to win an Academy Award for Best Original Song. Others have been nominated, but this is the first one to win. So Kincaid in this movie, the caretaker of Bond's family home. Albert Finney. Yeah, Albert Finney. They uh, they wanted Sean Connery to play that role. 
Mm. And then Sean Connery's like, I don't want to play. It's going to take people out of the movie. It would. There was a, there's a rumor that Skyfall was going to essentially be the resting place for former Bonds. Oh. They need to do that. And it was going to be because at the time. They need all, to do it. All former Bonds were alive. Well, be, and they. Be, when they teased this movie, they were like, Skyfall. Code word, Skyfall. And Bond was very traumatized. And they made up that word. It has nothing and it to has do with anything do with James it. Bond or, or Ian like Fleming. They, it's basically, well. The writers that, made it up at like 2 a.m. And he shouldn't be that traumatized because it's like, oh, yeah, I was a kid once. But if it was a resting place for 00 agents or 007. Where you go when you're done. Like, Which, that would be amazing. I love that moment when they're doing the word association and, like, James Bond's being all cocky and he's like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm yeah. fine. And then they say Skyfall and it rattles him. And you really kind of go, but what is that? But what mean? does he say? Finished. That's right. Uh, Why telling, didn't they go there? It's all setting up for Skyfall to be the place you go when you're done. I hope that Speaking when of they F reboot words, the, by the series. Way, Zach, <laughs> this is the first one of the series to use an F word for, for M says it. And I'm like, why? It's, We've got yeah. all these James Bond movies without using that. And yeah. Yeah. Throw it Timothy Dalton like mouths it, but doesn't yeah. say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we, we have our first F word for no reason. Don't like it. Uh, also, the, the only second time in which Bond suffers a gunshot wound. You guys know the first one? Where does he get shot? Mm. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Nope. Thunderball. Mm. Oh, wow. He gets shot in the leg in Thunderball, and they trace him with the blood through the parade. Uh, yeah, I was asleep. Yeah. What? All right, Joel, what do you give this? <sighs> Can I say a reluctant tier one? Yeah. Because I, this wasn't in my tier one initially, and then as I went through, I think Moonraker might have beat it out at one point. All right. But then when I when I got it, I was like, you know what? Over a billion dollars. I do enjoy it. I do think it's a well-made movie. It's got a great villain, a fantastic theme song. Right. And it looks so cool, so it got bumped up to a tier one. Okay. Do you think they mapped out how long Silva needed to walk to give his monologue when he first meets James? I know. Talking right? about the mice? Yeah, That's precisely. Just, I love that introduction of him as a villain, though. Yeah, but it, it's another one of those things that the first time you see it, you're like, dope. The yeah. second time you see it, you're like, wait a minute. And yeah. that's the problem with this movie. It was actually the first movie of this franchise that I saw in theaters. So the first time I, I ate it up, I loved it. Mm -hmm. it. Repeat viewings, I'm like, okay, I yeah, there's some holes here, but it's still a 001 for me. Yeah, it's a 001. So it's, we're, were we all giving it reluctant 001? No, yeah, absolutely. Because I'm not reluctant. It's, I like it. It's more entertaining to me than Casino Royale is. But it will not stand the test of time like Casino Royale. Casino Royale is objectively a better movie. Yes. But Skyfall is fun. Yeah. Yes. It. The end is weird, though. The uh, I'm going to flick on a light switch and it's going to be a bomb sure. thing. Hey, that could work. It worked for Nancy and, but and it is, at least is street. feasible. Also comment on the car. Um, he is back driving the classic 1964 Aston Martin DB5. Uh, makes it's another cool. appearance here. And it's the fully loaded version as opposed to Pierce Brosnan's commuter car that it right. was before. Uh, this has got the machine guns and everything that you want. Now we move to 2015 Spectra. Our first bacon pit was on this. Aww. A cryptic message from James Bond's past sends him on a trail to uncover the existence of a sinister organization named Spectre. With the new threat dawning, Bond learns the terrible truth about the author of all his pain in his most recent missions. I cannot do it. <laughs> do, do, it. Do, it. do it. I am the architect of your pain, James. Yes. There it is. <laughs> uh, uh, played by Christoph Waltz. That's Blofeld. Yes. Yeah. Our, uh, not originally. It's Franz Oberhauser at first. Oh, yeah. that's stupid. We have not seen Blofeld since... Sean Connery's era. He was hanging on the side of a helicopter once. Yeah, the generic air, air one. Quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also Kirkland, got Leia's to do is Dr. Madeline Swan. Uh, Dave Bautista's Mr. Hinks. Uh, the theme song, Writings on the Wall by Sam Smith. Uh, this has a lot good about it. It has a lot going on about it. If I had to get... I haven't been doing my alternate titles for this episode, but oh. it, if I had to give an alternate title for this one, it would be less than the sum of its parts. This on paper is the best James Bond movie ever made. In my home, why opinion, isn't it? This is probably my favorite Daniel Craig Bond yeah. film. And yeah, because it is back to Bond. They begin yeah. with the gun barrel shot. They have not done that in any of Daniel Craig so far. Yeah, he had him at the end, or he didn't. Yeah, do it all, or did him at the end, or homage to it. And Joel, I gotta disagree. I'm going to Zach on this one because this is has so many moving parts. Like, how yeah. much do we want to see M? talk in a room with Andrew Scott we do have about Ray, M.I. Sucks. Fines is M. Yeah. Love that man. Which is good but I don't want to see a whole subplot about him. I'm okay oh, with I it. never bought Leia Seydoux as a compelling Bond girl. <gasps> yeah, I really didn't. I was like, oh, she seems a little young. I oh, mean, it's she's... James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't really like Bautista. 
But Hinks did seem like a classic Connery Bond. And I get what he you're saying there. Even everything. with the train because fight as well. Because you get a train fight. Yeah. Uh, Monica Bellucci finally oh. shows up in the movie. And the opening... She's a babe. Oh, Monica Bellucci actually ended up being the oldest Bond girl in a movie. Yeah. At She's only in for like five minutes. Yeah. I would uh, say it's a, it's a lame part for her. They yeah, built her up great. for it's a lame great. part. It's not great. Right. Uh, also, uh, the opening tracking shot. I love the opening of this movie with the Day of the Dead yeah. parade and that go through and the single shot. Actually, Daniel Craig was apparently we're still recovering from injuries. Oh, and so they have a lot of that is stunt double, and they have CGI'd his face on onto a stunt yeah, double. They okay, do that a lot in this room. By the way, three shots. Just letting you know. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not a yeah. single shot, but it's like that. Yeah, oh, well. Yeah. But then, I mean, you get Blofeld. Like, I love the scene when he, uh, when James Bond realizes he's being tracked and he looks up at him. That is a great moment hello, of James. James Bond villain. Yeah, yeah. Hello. And then you get the sterile operating room, hello, and he gets a pet a cat, the white cat. I do want uh, to know how long it took Blofeld to paste all, uh, James Bond face on all those dummies in the targets in the final yeah. No, it's you just picture the henchman that had to do it. Like, why am I oh. doing this stupid job anyway? Yeah. There are so many. This is like. This is Return of the King, but with action scenes. Like there are so many climactic that. battles at the end because like it, there's one MI6 that yeah. big complex. Yeah, the the I'm gonna make you forget everything with a needle in your brain. Yeah, scene that's not fun. I think having Blofeld in the that movie, was a weird part because they never followed through with that. I think they so wanted to have the secret organization and capitalize what they did with Quantum that they brought Blofeld back, and I feel like it's the worst well, part of Craig's tenure because. It uh, just doesn't work, and it feels like a I am Khan. You're like, who cares? No. That's, yeah, it's an into darkness It's much better moment. than that, because Khan was one of those, they throw it out there like everyone knew it was them. This was yeah. actually one where you're kind of like, oh. But he's the, also like, the legality is finally done. They finally I'm got the son of the guy who taught you how to ski. It was a little weird. Remove, um, remove the brotherly connection. Don't even have Spectre. Continue on with Quantum, and you fixed most of the problems of this movie. Agreed. I disagree. But I, I am not as as down on it. I do agree with you, Joel. I like that this is a return to form. Like this is the This felt like Bond. We walk into M's office, we've got the double quilted door. Like we we walk in and he gets this mission and goes off and does his thing. It's a lot closer to the formula and yes. I, I appreciate that. Uh, speaking of the formula, Sam Smith uh, sings the song for this one mm -hmm. uh, for Spectre, but it's not they actually had someone else do it. Radiohead was going to do yeah. this song called Spectre. Right. Oh, I have a clip of it. Yes. Nice. It's not any worse than No Time to Die. Oh, yeah, that had a song, too. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty. It's nice. It's not yeah. beautiful. I like Radiohead, but this is the era where I didn't like Radiohead. Yeah. It's sleepy. It's too melancholy. Yeah. So it's a good closing a, track. Yeah. Yeah. Good closing credit, but not mm -hmm. an opening theme. Also, this holds a Guinness World Record for the largest movie stunt explosion of all time. Wow. At the end when they when Blowfields. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And this was the final James Bond movie seen by Sir Roger Moore. Okay. Cool guys. So Joel from explosions. This seems like one, one of your favorites. Yeah. Oh, it's your double one. This this is like I said when I saw it, I went finally Bond is back. So I'm happy to give it a tier double one. I've been very harsh, but it's a tier 002. Oh, oh uh, 002 as well for me. Okay. I like it. It's uh, fine. It's not one I'm going to pop in all the time, but it's good. But without it, we wouldn't have 20 whenevers. What is it? 2021. <laughs> yeah. 20, should have been 2020s. The reason. The gap between the. Uh, Spectre and No Time to Die is almost as great as the one between Dalton and Brosnan. Yeah, so No Time almost to Die. Almost six years. Here we the come. reason we are doing this show and <laughs> Daniel Craig almost not doing this movie, maybe that's part of the six years, is because he said he'd rather slit his wrist. Yes. Oh, he's yeah. He, glass. he said, like, I think it was, uh, he said in the third movie, he's like, I want, or he said, I wanted out a third movie. They won't let me go. I wanted to be done with this. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, that fourth movie doesn't want to be part of it. And now he does a fifth. And No Time to Die, in my opinion, is the Toy Story 4 of the Bond franchise. Because Spectre had the ending. He was not it James did. Bond initially. And then he became the James Bond we all know and love, Inspector, and literally rides off into the sunset with an Aston Martin. And it's great. It's a great ending. And then No Time to Die comes along. It's like, this is also good. But we already had the ending. Yeah. In my opinion, which is right. 
All right, what's the plot? Oh, yes, I should get into that. James Bond has left active service. His peace is short-lived when Felix Leiter, an old friend from the CIA, turns up asking for help leading Bond onto the trail of a mysterious villain armed with dangerous new technology, nanobots. <laughs> so the villain is Lucifer Safin, played by Rami Malek. And Blofeld. Yeah, and Blofeld, kind of. But we do have Madeline Swan coming back. And yes. we also have a new 007. Yes. And it's Lashana Lynch playing Nomi. But she's not a new, not a new James Bond. She's a no. new 007 because right. he's retired. Also, uh, by the way, longest runtime. So Daniel Craig holds the distinguishment of being both a, having a movie that's the longest runtime and the shortest runtime. Do you feel like they were like, hey, how, how did Brosnan end his series? Like with a lot of puns and a lot of gadgets. Like it was a little more silly. Let's do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. But because, they, yeah, like this the opening have, scene though. What the, horror, the horror movie opening scene. Oh, in yeah, the absolutely. That was fun. It and was then way fun. The, the explosion in the graveyard was also effective. It all that happened after that. I yeah. felt the emotion. We had a whole bacon bit about right. this. It's kind of sad they didn't capitalize on the emotion yeah. that was felt in that opening scene because it's so scary. It's, it sets up Safin to be an amazing Dr. No, and then they do nothing with him. Yeah. Do you like how I said he's Dr. No? That By the way, be. that's a no mask, N-O-H mask. Yes. He was actually rumored to be Dr. No. And... Sh- it would have been fine. Considering they have Blofeld back, they could have done it. It wouldn't have added anything, though. And speaking sure, of bringing it would back, have the same, it, the would same have, it would have been a background to a character where we got nothing. True. Uh, speaking of coming back, Leia Sadu come back, uh, yeah. reprised her role as Madeline Swan, making her Much the first. Much better in, in the whole history of James Bond movies, we're over 50 years now, uh, the first female to lead to appear in successive Bond films. Because, well, I'm just lead, right? Yes, lead. Because Sylvia Trench doesn't count. No, she's not lead. She was supposed she's to be the girlfriend. in Doctor No yeah. and in for, for uh, sure Love. And a lot of the delay here was because of uh, the ankle injury Daniel Craig suffered. Uh, he had to get that taken care of, so they delayed the filming. And then the pandemic happened, and they had to delay it a little longer. Uh, this movie, though, it needs to gross at least eight hundred million dollars to break even at the box office. Do we know where it's at right now? Uh, last I checked, which could be wrong, it was at six hundred and sixty-seven million. That's quite a bit, though. It is quite a bit. They're getting close to breaking even. But in this time, that's very impressive. It is. You know, I would pay to see this again just to see Paloma, played by Anna de Armas. So for awesome. seven minutes. So good. She's so she good. She was so fantastic in this movie. Uh, also, Daniel Craig is now the third oldest actor to play James Bond in No Time to Die. Uh, because he was... <laughs> Isn't it crazy how 51. age and taking care of your body works out now compared to back then? <sighs> if I look that good at 51, I'll be happy. Right? But... I I did enjoy this movie. I enjoyed, like my brother said, I enjoyed ninety percent of this movie, and I completely agree with that. Yeah, most of it, I was like, "How do you feel about Cyclops and the uh, the eye communicator?" Eh, mm-hmm. It's a henchman, but it's like a henchman, like back to old school. It doesn't yes. fit in this new era. But now that no, but now that we've had the new era, the new era was Daniel Craig becoming James Bond. Now that he's come, James Bond, it's you like see all that stuff. Full silliness. Probably. It's escalation, Kent. I think you'd Esca- buy that <laughs> escalation to silliness. Ba- uh, Batman. He dresses up as a bat. Someone dresses up as a clown. That's the whole point is escalation in the second movie. Okay. Yeah. So eyeball communicator. Yes. Deal. Eyeball communicator is escalation. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and if you want uh, more in-depth thoughts, we did do a bacon bit uh, on yes. this. With spoilers this and everything movie, we'll yeah. talk about then. Uh, I would like to call out cars for a second. Please do. So we start off with wow. the uh, Aston Martin DB5 from the previous movie. Mm-hmm. And then we actually switch over to the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which was in uh, The Living Daylights, which is an awesome car. And then there's also uh, the Aston Martin Valhalla supercar, which is seen, as well as the DBS Super Legera. I don't know how to say it. Um, so there are some Aston Martin supercars, but really it's just the old stuff in this one. Does it break your heart when they destroy these cars in half of these movies? No, because when I went to the James Bond exhibit in the museum, I saw that they, they have like a one third scale car that they blow up. So they, they destroyed. I think it was the uh, one they blow up in Skyfall. It's a miniature. I think Toronto Dice they destroyed. They destroyed fifteen BMWs. Oh, they can. That's fine. <laughs> They're BMWs. Yeah, now you're just peeling to Zach. <laughs> yeah, I am, they can go to family friendly. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. So we have given our thoughts on this movie. I think it's a tier 002. It's not a bad movie at all. I think the ending was quite undeserved. I think giving Bond uh, an emotional uh, attachment. I'll just say that to keep spoiler free. Mm-hmm. At the end, it was kind of a. A gimme. Like, it was a little cheap. Yeah. But it plays out well. The way it ends, uh, ego trip, but it still it felt ends. Like it forgot it was part of a franchise, yes, in yes, my yes. opinion. It, it, like, I think Daniel Craig asked for that ending because of how freaking emotional his era has been. Yeah. But it's a 002 movie because it's still pretty good. 
I say 002 as well. Like I said, it's fine. It's good. Yeah. Not my favorite, but not bad. Right. So, it, uh, And I said this on the bacon bit, too. I, I think I gave it a 9 on 10. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 001 here. Uh, this just, it it hits all the right chords for me, personally. Uh, How do you feel about the Hans Zimmer this time around? Hans Zimmer score is great. Score. A little Batman-esque, let's be a honest. A little Batman-esque, but then he does, he throws in... Uh, a lot of On Her Majesty's Secret yeah. Service here. That gets me. In fact, the closing song of this movie is the same closing song from On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Are you going to be okay? Uh, which is the song I danced to at my wedding. Like, it's it's, it's me. Which adorable. seems like a risky move. I'm just saying. <laughs> We're alive. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like this movie a lot. And it felt like a fitting end to this version of the franchise. Yeah, and I'm ready for a reboot. It's me cool. too. Yeah, thank you, move on. And so, yeah. That's it. That's all 27 James Bond movies Woo. we've gone through now. We've gone all the way from Connery to Craig and talked to tiered each one of them. We want to know your thoughts as well as we get into this. But before we before we close out, just a couple quick questions for you. Would you like to hear the Zach stats on this one? Yes, please. Zach stats. Uh, of course, when we do a tiering, I always say what we all agreed on tier ones and tier threes to give you an idea of what's really good. So or this one, I mean, I actually, gentlemen, it's all right. I wouldn't mind hearing like your like top personal ones maybe the ones you'd recommend the most but this kind of might encompass the list so we gave solid tier ones to from russia with love goldfinger golden eye casino royale and skyfall all right okay. and then we gave reluctant skyfall yeah reluctancy for skyfall and then what we'd i guess recommend you avoid uh casino royale 1967 definitely octopussy and never say never again well those are the only ones it. that we all gave that's tier it. threes to well you kind of skewed the curve yeah, yeah. On the on the world is not enough. I skewed the day. curve on Die Another Day and Quantum of Solace. Yep, uh, Joel, you seem to like A View to a Kill more than you should. <laughs> I uh, barely liked. It. I like Diamonds Are Forever more than I should. I mean, there's a there's a bunch yeah. that we and I was right every single time. Okay, yeah, it's whatever. great. It's fine. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I think I mean for me personally, those those ones that we gave tier one to for Marsha with Love, Goldfinger, Golden Eye, Casino Royale. You're, you're not going to go wrong with those. Yeah, but uh, what would be your recommendations? Maybe like our top, three, our top, like our top three favorites. Top three. Yeah. I no surprise there. I'm probably going to just echo what you just said because I was actually thinking Goldfinger, GoldenEye, and Casino Royale yeah. would be probably my top. Which is funny because Spectre is probably my favorite of the Craigs. But yeah, Casino like Royale kind of stands alone a little better. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it's all. Uh, GoldenEye, that. my number one. From Russia with Love, number two. Good choice. And You Only Live Twice, number three. Oh, all I, Conneries. I, I, uh, all Connery except for uh, Golden Goldeneye. Eye. Oh, yeah. He's Goldeneye, Goldeneye yeah. Goldfinger. Yeah. I know. It's confusing because yeah. there's so much gold. Lots of gold. I yeah. love gold. Uh, yeah. The hipster in me wants to say Dr. No, just to see where it came from. And it's a very hmm. good, like, it's it's smaller scale detective movie. Um, but I do like Dr. No. But my favorite Connery is still You Only Live Twice. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of people give, uh, you know, Goldfinger the nod, and I, I respect that. Uh, I'm going to say You Only Live Twice, Casino Royale. And then, uh, I, I mean, no one's surprised. I'm going to say Honor Her Majesty's Secret Service, too. Yeah, I knew that was going to come up at yep. least once. So, yeah. And then I just want to ask you guys, favorite Bond actor? Uh, my, my favorite Bond actor, I mean, recency bias aside, it, it is Daniel Craig. Because I think he has you the like most... James Blonde. I, I, I think he has the most consistent uh, character through his arc. Um, I think his movies are the most consistent quality. Uh, and I like his portrayal of the character. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would say him. Um, I'm going to give Sean Connery a close number two. And honestly, any given day, I might swap those two for different, very different reasons. Uh, and then after that, I actually put Dalton number three. Wow. You're not surprised. Yeah. I, I loved Dalton. And then uh, Rosnan, then more. Okay. Oh, Ken? sorry. Lazenby. Mm, I put. Yeah, Lazenby. we all forget about him. Oh, too. I put Lazenby probably below Dalton, but. Sure. Whatever. Uh, normally, I would say Brosnan. But considering he's 50-50 for movies and now having gone back through the old movies, it's yeah, Connery it's, all the it, way. I, I he's like, a breath of fresh air. It's uh, Connery, Brosnan, Dalton, Craig and Moore, and Lazenby. Wow. Okay, okay. And then mine would probably be, I actually have it written down here because I was thinking about this for a while. Connery, then Brosnan, then Moore, then Craig, then Dalton, then Lazenby. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I, I liked the quote that... Uh, Sean Connery is James Bond and everybody else played James Bond. Yes. You know, like yes. That's, uh, totally. That's, that's the good way to look at it. Yeah. Because uh, Sean Connery really did define the character. Yes. We want to hear your thoughts on James Bond. And we want to know about the gadgets and the Bond girls and the James Bonds and the cars. We want to know <laughs> your favorites and your least favorites. Give us all your thoughts. We're there on social media listening and we enjoy hearing from you. Also, make sure you check out our most recent Bacon Bit where we did break down some of the music. Of course, we couldn't do all of it because that 
in and of itself could be a really long oh, yeah. show. But we did do a little category show on the music. And if you stop by Patreon.com, we also put up a, a little tiering list of all of our opinions on We went these overboard songs. for Dr. November. Yeah, we, we did. did. So if you want to hear our tier list of the songs, uh, that'll be on Patreon.com. But before we go, we want to thank some patrons and a couple of very special tiers. We have the I Am The Listener tier, which features Lady Terry A. Finley, Sean Sanquist, Bacon Sale Council Member Wannabe Kyler, Alicia Bass, Scott Sprague, Braden Winterton, Chris Strout, Sir and Madam Hicks, Jennifer Kukowski, Adam and Rachel Crump, Glow Clan Daniel, Babs, Rocky and Steph, Jake the Cooler King Swallow, Shannon West, and Allison Gall. Then we have our Bacon Council, which features Chris Anderson, Nicole Postal Elf Number 29 Hale, Ryan and Marley Farron, Mots, Stephen Ross, our favorite couple of Madsons, Her Royal Highness Jessica Terry, Beaker, and Reverse Listener. Thank you so much, patrons. We really Thank do appreciate you. Thank you. Pew, pew, pew. But if you want to find me, you can find me at 76 Joel on Twitter. You can find me performing the Quickwits. They perform Saturday nights at the Midville Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to qwcomedy.com or go to the Quickwits Facebook page. Or you can also check out my 64 pages of James Woo! Bond notes and watch a movie along with me at patreon.com slash If you want to find me on Twitter or Instagram, it's at Kenny3DD. If you want to remember movie reviews, it's showtimeshowdown.com. If you'd like to sit down for about 30 minutes with me and give me your opinion on whatever I've just said on the show, visit blakesbarbershop.com and schedule a haircut. Or you can reach out to me on social media at Tumbling Mustard on at Tumbling Mustard on Twitter and Instagram. But more importantly, make sure you're following Bacon Sale on social media, like that Facebook page, and go to Twitter and Instagram at Bacon Sale. While you're doing that, stop by tpublic.com slash bacon sale where you can get yourself a awesome merch. It's great for the holidays. I'd order now though. Make sure you get it. Yep. Get that special person in your life, a Team Zach t shirt. And then if you like what's going on here, you like the show and want to support us further, you can go to patreon.com slash bacon sale where additional support starts at just $3 a month where you get access to bacon bits, which uh, we th- we got to we gotta tone those down. They're getting too long. This one was like Ooh. 37 minutes. It's, it's a lot of extra content. We just kind of uh, chew the fat and talk about what's going on in our lives in the media. That's at patreon.com slash bacon sale. So until next time. Bring back the romper. Come on, because everyone in this franchise talks this way. <laughs> the producers are Sean Connery. Yes, all of them are. The what? Whip, whip. Hey, now. We still going? I love Money Penny. But you like the reboot. I love Money Penny. He got the boot. <laughs> Timothy Dalton walked so Daniel Craig could run. But a hook. That feels a little Roger Mori to me. You want to talk like Connery so bad, don't you? After Capri- capturing, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Baby Benicio. Yes. Where's my wife? We sent her on a nice honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. uh, you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire? But then, no respect. So he drives a BMW Z3, which is it just inappropriate. I can't this fit in a Mazda Miata, Zach. Did your movie. grandpa help on this movie, too? Is that why you don't like it? No. <laughs> Finger! Uh, I... Yeah, oh. with the guy from Slim Goodbody? Yes. <laughs> no, the guy from Ghost. She's missing her earlobe. Yay, they cut a BMW Z8 in half. Hagrid almost drowning in a pool of caviar. That was fun, too. <laughs> yeah, Rob. Out of context, it sounds weird. A 10-year-old doesn't know if Denise Richards is a good actor. A 10-year-old goes, hey, but an an 18-year-old notices that even more. (laughs) Have you noticed the corners of his mouth anytime he's in pain? They go really far out to the side. Uh, Yeah, because I've seen both Mamma Mia movies.
<laughs> I just want to have a drive-by <laughs> fruit. The Too jinx much. almost drowning in a hotel room that's melting was pretty stressful for oh, me. I'm rooting for water on that. But I don't know how to you. feel about Vesper Lind. I've seen that EFY video. Popping out of the water in that little skimpy thing. <laughs> He's not as beautiful as any writer. His pecs are. Another way to die. There's back. If I'm the son wrong. of the guy who taught you how to ski. Larvis. Larvis? I am the architect of your pain, James. Yes. There it is. <laughs>